Welcome to Let's Talk About Gay Stuff. Let's talk about gay stuff. Woo-hoo. Let's talk Crap. about gay, gay stuff. stuff. Let's <laughs> talk about gay stuff. That's my All rap. Right. No, it doesn't work. Okay, I tried it. Stick to your day job. It seemed like I was like uh, having a conniption. All right, we're the podcast <laughs> that talks about gay stuff and discusses the week in LGBT plus history. Woohoo! We are Thomas, Tony, Kendall, and welcome to our show. How are you guys doing? Great. We're getting a little later start, and I think we are definitely lubricated from all of the vino. And, and You'll hear lots of this. <laughs> yeah. And the oh, you're drinking been, again? So, uh, this should be an interesting episode. <laughs> so this week we're reviewing the week of September 29th through October 5th, and we'll discuss Designing Women, LGBT History Month, and Truman Capote. So before we get into our topics, ladies, what's been going on this week? You know, Houston flooded this week. Imelda. Amelda, yeah. Yeah. She held up our spoopy podcast. She came in, yeah, because of Amelda, Ooh. our our sister podcast. Oh no our way! Podcast was unable. Well, at to least one Amelda in history has gotten wet. Woof. You don't get much action, isn't it? <laughs> Amelda. <laughs> da, 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 da. Are you talking about Amelda or Tony? No I'm kidding. <laughs> Tony or Amelda seems to be right. the driest names. <laughs> <laughs> the driest names. We should come up with the top ten list of the driest names. Amelda. Come on. Tony. Barbara. No, I'm just an anomaly. Anthony. Most Tonys, I think, get a lot of action. <laughs> Antonio. <laughs> Antonio. <laughs> Antonio. Antoinette. Uh, Antoinette. Antoinette, yes. Oh, Tony, baby. Thank you. And Tony. Okay, sorry. Antonio. I think we, we got them all. <laughs> all right, so, uh, Well, yeah. speaking of getting wet, I have some news. Oh, sure. Oh, what's up, Gando? And this is breaking news because I haven't told anybody here. I got engaged last week. Oh, my God, you did? Woohoo! Yes. Congratulations. That's amazing. For real? Yeah, I really did. Good for you. I'm not kidding. What the fuck? Congratulations. Why didn't you tell us? Well, you're telling us. Congratulations. To tiny baby Asian. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Where's your ring? Oh, we you can't. It's oh, in we your don't pants. do it like that. Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna tell us the story? It's what a happened? Piercing. Yeah. How what happened? Pro- how did you propose? <sighs> All right. Did you All propose? Right. Okay. Well, it was very Kendall. Um, Wait, you proposed. It was a mutual. No, you say it. No, you say it. Wait, Aww. what's happening? Oh my god. Okay, gosh. so tiny baby Asian Pookie Bud, who the world also might know as Ben, is a property manager. And we've been talking about hinting about moving in with each other. So I was at his place, and I go to his place nonstop. Like it's like a I basically live at his place, There's and my place is a closet. Yeah. So that's how it happens. He was stressed about getting new clients, like new property to manage, and I said, "I think I found you a new client." He said, "You did?" I said, "Me." <laughs> <laughs> so he's gonna uh, manage my property. And okay, move in, rent it, and yeah. then he was like, "Well, if we're gonna do this, I, he's gonna make an honest I woman." Want, yeah, he's gonna make an honest woman out of me. He is like so not gonna said, live in sin. Mm-hmm. He's married, so <gasps> we are getting married next year. Good what? for you. That's amazing. That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That that is is like so a, cute. He's the sweetest. That he's, is yeah. like a little bombshell that you just dropped on us. That's amazing. That's yeah. Good. Congratulations. yeah. We're excited. The and you survived your first hurricane together, so it's official. Mm-hmm. The little listen <laughs> team is growing. Oh. And look, the night I, we decided to do this, I went home and I, I was like, I have to call my parents. And I called my dad. And I was like, so we're going to get married? And he's like, that's what you want to do, son. <laughs> Good old it's like dad. a very dad response. He said, well, you've, like, you've dated like- a lot of men, so how do you know this is the one? <laughs> like, dad, I've dated four men. Wow. God. Well, I was like earlier, I was gonna be You're like, Well, I've slept with that, a lot, but I've only <laughs> dated four. Yeah. Just gonna like, that sounds like someone like well, that's what you got to do. That sounds like an old school, that's like what when, you want to when do. she when the wife gets pregnant, the girlfriend gets yeah. pregnant. That's like, what you want to do. Married. Yeah, wow. <laughs> well, that's what age did your dad get married? Like 24? 19. Oh, yeah, see, 19, he regretted it. So, have you all said a, set a date? A month, Wait, that is no, a because we've talked about. Look, nobody's walking me down there. I'm not going to walk down an aisle like a fool. I can't wear pure white. That would just Why be a not? lie. Kendall. We'll get it dirty in a minute. <laughs> all right. Pure white. Blood and feces and urine all over. So are you going to do it here or somewhere else? New Orleans? New Orleans? Ooh, no, we'll do it here. Destination. Okay. He's got a lot of family here. Okay. It'll be like more of a reception than an actual wedding. It'll be a tiny Perfect. little wedding. For wait, his parents, I mean, Ben's very traditional. So I imagine. We're telling his parents Sunday. And because of the way this we tape, 
They, they won't, won't know, know after this yeah. comes out. Oh, yeah. did they listen to this podcast? No, but this I'm talking person. about you never <laughs> know. Like, you oh, never know. I'd like to. I'd like. God, the wedding's off if they do. I'd like to know that they were fans of this. <laughs> Right, exactly. Be good. They These better Vietnamese be now. Immigrants. It'll go well. We need more listeners. They yeah. better be fans now. Yeah. Well, that's, that, <laughs> we know well, giant well, wait, so this families. is still one step. No, but they like you. Like, so yeah, they do. It'll be good. Yeah. yeah. What's not to love? I mean, uh, thanks, so Kendall. You're gonna get a JOP, and then you're gonna have a reception. Oh, just the piece. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you gonna have an actual ceremony? I thought you meant jerk off. Oh, you partner. know what? You, you could get married Ooh, at okay. my sister's because uh, her husband Rudy is uh, is ordained minister. They married someone at their house. Get she out house in San Antonio. It can be a getaway. Can wedding. they get a couch for her? Our friend Mitch is an ordained minister. She can marry you. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. And then you she can she, my, she can be my no, date to the reception. I sold her her couch. Uh, Overpriced. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get that commission. Well, I knew it would get and then we broke up. And like no the matter day what after. cost that she paid for, I knew it would be stained. Just kidding. Oh my day. god! <laughs> like that bitch wow. is gonna stain. Okay, it. we're talking about Ain't, 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 ain't no need to drop no money like on that couch. Staining that my sister staining that couch. Last time I was in, well, a couple of trips ago, I was like, oh, I told she her, knows I, I told them I was going into town, and I show up like in the like Friday afternoon at like five o'clock. I knock on the door, and all of a sudden, I just see figures running in the background and sure enough then <gasps> i walk in then the, i like i was like knocking on the door wait and it a was, minute it was, was like super orgy locked. no it wasn't an orgy. 5 a.m or p.m p.m and my sister was getting it on with her husband and they ran and so she answers the door like all flustered wait She's all like, the kids were gone ah, how? well they were asleep they were t- She's like they were taking a nap I'm so like, she needs to get it while she can no, yeah I, that's good for fine her. but they were getting it like in the middle of their house like in the like so Ew, that's like so, a porn where like, the brother walks so in my Who point cares? is on the, on the couch the stained like so kendall was right why drop a bunch of money yeah. they're just gonna stain it anyway. than gross yeah. veronica i know gross you know everybody does that gross veronica she was so embarrassed. She was like, I'm like, whatever. I don't even want to know. Does she listen? Oh, she, she does. Oh, God. She does listen. So, uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad you called her out her by name. Having oh. sex, part of my marriage story. You know, we've <laughs> had issues with calling Thank people you. out by name we on did. this podcast. Uh-oh. <laughs> yes, you, well, you have. But anyway, so congratulations, Kendall. Uh, we yes. look forward to congratulations seeing, uh, hearing more of the details him. about your nuptials. That's exciting. <gasps> are my nuptials showing? Your nuptials are showing. Yeah. So who's gonna wear, you're gonna wear a gown? I figure. It no, I don't even care about the. We've talked about this in the past before. It's. I just want to do, go to the courthouse and then have a honeymoon. <laughs> but you do need to have <laughs> something where like. Sorry, your friends I know you want the open bar and all, but. Yeah, you're not gonna have a. I mean, otherwise, why are we talking about uh, this? Exactly. Right. So this could have been a lot shorter segment. It should have. Well, again, congratulations. Congratulations. I don't know, you that is awesome. Yeah. That. That's good stuff. How did you keep that from us? From. I like, know. Uh, this happened last week, so we recorded last Friday. Oh, no, I told everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Facebook. He's like, oh, you guys are like the C team. I thought y'all knew. <laughs> Wait a minute. You you knew before last Friday? We talked about this. Yeah, Ben over... was here last Friday. No, we talked about this Saturday. Oh, okay. okay. Thank God. Okay. Yeah, Saturday, six days ago. Oh, my gosh. Did we find out six days ago? Oh. He proposed mm. at the wedding. <laughs> That's true. You did go to the Albert Was it before or after the wedding? <laughs> it was like right when the they wedding. said I do, I said, I have an announcement. We have an make. announcement. We're like, does married. anyone have any? You're like, ding, ding, ding. Oh, we love gay marriage. <laughs> Yay. Wow. And it was a gay wedding, too, we went to. Yeah, was it was so cute. Well. I saw y'all's pictures on Facebook. Yeah, it, was gay, it was a gay marriage? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that. The couple that. we met at the <laughs> July 4th. Before. You didn't know they were gay? <laughs> and we talked about this last week. I don't know. What more proof do you need? He just wants to. Oh, he wants to see that. They were that cute he saw his too. Sister. Mm. I'm but, just kidding. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Stop. I don't remember. Stop that. <laughs> anyway, so what else, Tony? You had a busy week. Busy week. Yeah, the flood. You know, the flood. Survive the flood. That flood was crazy. So I went running in the morning at like nine o'clock along the bayou here in Houston, which is a normal running path. Uh, and nothing. then cruising yeah, nothing. area as yeah. well. Where you where you Ooh, ran into? It? Well, you know, you ran into that homeless people. Those homeless people that were oh, uh, giving yeah. a BJ. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, so I I went running there. Which one were you? The homeless man receiving the BJ or the? I was witnessing. I was the boy. Here's exactly what happened. His fetish is looking. I'm driving by and I'm like, oh, that guy's getting a BJ. <laughs> and then I wrecked my bike and they were laughing at me and I'm like, oh, fuck you. I want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> at least your bike wasn't the only thing to get wrecked. And they started yeah. laughing at me like, ah, we're homeless, but we're getting action. They <laughs> pitied you. But like four hours after I ran, apparently that bayou was flooded. Like Spencer and I walked there 
uh, in the afternoon. It was insane. It was a like no. running. Yeah, so like we, my coworkers and I went to go to lunch. So we leave, and it's raining, but, you know, the bayous or whatever, the streets or whatever. We start going, and it's like, oh, that street's flooded. Let's go this way. And it's like, ooh, that street's flooded. Uh, let's go this way. Then that street's flooded. And then when we, like, okay, let's just go back and turn around. The way we came back was flooded. So it's like literally with a matter of minutes, it's just like yeah. everything's flooding. Yeah. You you uh, ride your bike to work. So how did you? I'm with the- I had to drive this week. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, but you got to wear your galoshes. You've been, your Hello I Kitty did, yes. Oh, my total like cute that rain suit. Yeah. Oh, Spencer you know. was really excited because he has a raincoat that he wear a rain jacket that he wears. But if he, he bought it's it common. from, uh, what is that? J. Crew. So it looks really cute. But it doesn't hold anything. Like, oh yeah, he was soaked in the. He walked the dogs and was soaked <laughs> after the, walking the dogs with that coat on. Oh my god! Well, it, what does your it, urine do when it hits it? Uh, well, that's different. That's a light spring. Water sports, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! So I will say this, like, you know, I'm not into Y'all fashion, fancy. whatever. Y'all and I just, uptown. <laughs> I hate people that are kind of extra. After Harvey, you know, I'm like, okay. Harvey, like it's flooded. Let me just get out, like on my bike, and go like the four block radius that I can. Every fucking girl that I saw is in her super fancy galoshes, and I'm like, you can wear that like once every five years here. And I'm like, it just they were hurt. waiting. They prayed for the hurricane. I know it irritated me. I was like, you know, see, that's the thing in Houston. Like, you can't you look cute in a sweater and a scarf or a raincoat because the weather never like one. Right. If you're wearing a scarf or it's either, like, a sweater, it's not cold enough. And if you're trying to wear galoshes and a raincoat, well, what should it, you wear it, in a hurricane? But, but, a snorkel. But my point is, it rains too hard. Like the the jet- I had lesbian water boat shoes. The, wear yeah, that. You need that. Thank Those you. Those are for not during the hurricane months. That's for, for the lesbians. Water. But. But like Spencer's jacket was like for a nice, s- smooth Seattle rainfall. Oh, like a drizzle, dropped, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Not for the like I'm walking my four blocks to Amazon, you know, no. where I'm like the, you know, <laughs> look cute. Take your jacket off, like in in Houston. I give blowjobs for five dollar. Who? No. Where, who? What, I don't. Where? That's what the jacket. No, <laughs> saying. But anyways, can I like switch gears to like just be a little? Unless you had. Wait, oh, wait, so wait, 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 wait. Before we do that, you had an interesting Amelda story. What What happened with you? Oh, it wasn't interesting. It was sad. Oh, okay. We'll talk about Amelda. It. We're talking about. So at the time of this taping, Amelda will be like a week and a half old. We'll have another. Right. We'll have another. She'll be dead. We'll. Dead and it was Amelda. It wasn't Harvey. You know, or Katrina. <sighs> oh but. my god. We love Amelda though. So tropical storm, typhoon, um, whatever you want to call it, Amelda hit. It was a tropical storm. And then at ten forty five, I was leaving an appointment, and everywhere I would drive, there would be flooded roads. So I would just, just close my eyes and take a left, you know, in a ditch, <sighs> something, turn around. Yes. Anyway, it took seven hours for me to get home, Ooh. and when I got home, I seven would, hours to what would it normally take? Fifteen minutes? Twelve minutes? Because and I know twelve minutes because I still use. Google Maps because I'm not really good with directions. You still use, so map, I still you still use MapQuest. I print out my MapQuest directions. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, but it took. I left at 10:45. I got home at 6:30, whatever that is. Holy! And when I got home, what? I live in a condominium plex or whatever. Right next, next and to. And I the have bayous. a top unit, a second floor unit. The bottom units were all flooded, so I couldn't even park or get into home. So I just tried to drive to Tiny Baby Asian. Um, Pookie Butt, also known as Ben, my fiance. I'm not going to be, y'all, don't let me become one of those people that says like, my me, fiance me my every fiance. time. Well, no, you, you need to call him like Tiny Baby fiance. Asian Pookie my Butt. Fiance. I only feel badly because I feel now like Ben uh, if Ben listens to our podcast. He's like, uh, he's going to be sensitive. Nobody like, even cares exactly, that we got engaged. No one texted me that we got engaged. That's why it's a bad thing that you didn't tell us because now poor Ben's like, these people. No, he hasn't told care. many people. He's told his close friends. I'm going to text him right now. Congrats, Ben. On your. Ne- Future nuptials. <laughs> what? Ben. Can I not? You're like, wait, he doesn't know yet. <laughs> uh, I haven't told him. Just I haven't kidding. told him we're engaged. <laughs> wait, he hasn't told Ben yet. Only Kendall knows this yeah. engagement's <laughs> happening. <laughs> Surprise, Ben. I haven't sent him a script of how it's supposed to go. Uh, oh, jeez. Yeah. Anyway, like, wait, trapped engaged. driving around the city during hurricane. Yeah. The no. biggest hurricane ever. No, they don't know because this is two weeks ago. Tropical storm. Um, the whole city was flooded. Several cats died. Sorry, <laughs> lesbian owners that own them. <laughs> oh, too too much. TMI. Too much. Yeah. Well, they love a wet cat. Ooh. <laughs> da, 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 da. Gloria, are you listening? Gross. <laughs> Gloria, how's your cat? 
Okay, Glory, anyway. So poor Gloria, she got stuck at work. I blame it on my fiance. She ended up getting home, but yeah. Anyways, <laughs> what are you going to talk about? So I think, though, I mean, so I think for the Houstonians, I, I, th- I was telling Spencer this, I think this is going to be a big deal for the mayor. Like, which yeah. is, this is, I mean, not that you want to be like politics and a natural disaster, but. Tony like, is the mayor of Munchkin City. Dun, 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 in the dun, land dun, of dun. Oz. I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> rude. I think like Mayor Sylvester Turner is going to be episode. like, he, that's going to be. Well, an and issue I, for I do think this is going to be a bigger and bigger issue because. So I, I don't know what the reasoning was, but, you know, Amazon, we weren't even considered for Amazon. Um, and. We weren't technical. We didn't have the technical capability, like a uh, work technical workforce. That was kind of what was thrown out there. It may, have, but I also We're have stupid. to feel like okay. So, for example, Wednesday, it's like oh, there's going to be this massive rain. School's canceled. There wasn't any rain. Thursday, everything's going to be great. The whole city's flooded. People can't get home. Cars are f- drowned. Like whatever. But in the what I mean, like. At four in the morning, when you make that decision, the weather was fine, right? Because I know right. he's going to get a no, ton no. Of but shit. I'm saying, like, if I'm a company and it's like, okay, like, up until four or five years ago, this never happened, and now, you never know what's going to happen. And so, like, you know, you could just have times when like businesses are shut down for a day or two because people can't get to work. It does make you think, like, are people going to think, should I go to Dallas or San Antonio <laughs> versus Houston? And so. I do feel like long term our city needs to like think about this, right? I mean, it's like there's no I think everyone just thinks, Oh, it happens, but it's like, well it didn't happen I've been here fourteen years. The first ten years I've lived here, none of this happened. Now it's like once or twice a year. Yeah, yeah and then once you came out of the closet we've started having these storms, these hurricanes. Yeah. Oh, oh my god, the, the Lord <laughs> the Lord works in mysterious ways. Yeah, like they- shh. So you used to hit New Orleans and then you moved from New Orleans here. Yeah, you that is true. Oh my god. It's all your fault. It's all your oh fault. Go back in the but yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I would say the same thing though. Came back and to, from Virginia to Texas in 2015, and yeah, with Tax Day flood, um, Memorial Day flood, uh, Harvey, and then this because Imelda. if you're a business like from out of state and you're like, okay, the state of Texas has the same tax incentives, right? Whatever. And so, what is Houston at, like versus all these other, you know? I mean, it, it is an issue. I think it's like something that's got to be. I do be. feel, though, I mean, I know, like you said, the school districts and the mayor are going to get a ton of crap. But, like, when you're, again, I was running in the in the middle of the city at yeah. 9 in the morning, and there was no rain falling. The bayous weren't flooded. So, well, like, how do you is, make a call? Like, this is No, I'm not saying Houston. a call, but I think long-term planning, there's yeah. got to be uh, something. It's a very to, Houston topic for an international podcast. Oh, uh, that's well, true. I would, but you. But I think, no, I think it's city planning. Because when we lived in Virginia, it was the same thing. It was always, like, snow days. Like, do you call the snow day? And, you know, and city planners always get it wrong. It's just, like, on the days they're, like, not supposed to call it. And in Montana, you never heard this, right? You, you always went to school or work. I but like, Well, and, he lived on uh, the flatlands. <laughs> like, he lived <laughs> in the lowlands. He didn't live uptown. <laughs> But like in Virginia, it was the funny. same thing. It's just like you the you go by the forecast, and you're like the the for, the city managers always make the wrong call because like they're like when it, they think it's gonna be okay, it always turns out to be the worst, and then when they think it's right. gonna be the worst, they well, call let it me again. make a challenge. To Anyways, you sorry, yes, that ask if you meet someone the next time you meet somebody from Houston, say what's the big deal about Houston, and you will always get two responses. Always, were we no three? I'm sorry, I'm gonna add a third one. We're the most diverse city in the country, okay? Right? Am I right? Tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, probably, yeah. Because se- <laughs> you've said it before. The second one is, well, we have a lot of really good restaurants. And the third one is, well, we're the fourth biggest city in the country, soon to be third. Right? You've all said that. I mean, uh, I, no. No, you. here's my thing. I feel like I love city. Houston. I love a lot of things about Houston. It's on the brochure. Yeah, I, I feel like people from here, like, try to build up. They're like, everything about Houston is, like, the economy. The, like, it is diverse. I will give it that. And I like that, like, we are very diverse, and we have, like, true diversity, I feel like. We have very authentic restaurants and things like that. Like, and we're very Taco integrated Cabana. in our diversity. Taco Bell. No, but you can go to, like, Chinatown. Term. You get, like, really authentic. Like, you can get authentic, like, they Ethiopian actually food, that Asia whatever. Town. That's not a joke. We call that oh, Asia Town now, yeah. Okay. Well, they used to have a Chinatown, but yeah, it's yeah. point. Yeah. It's yeah. diverse. But I feel it's every time people brag about Houston, it's the economy. It's not like, which we do have a good economy. Excuse me, my boyfriend is half Asian, half white. 
Where you have white you. lemons. Oh my gosh! All <laughs> like, right. white by I was trying to go with the mega thing, over. the pol- political things. Just this is what you're marrying, baby. I wanna, I wanna briefly just chat about because I've been watching. I, I get on Twitter way too much, uh, and there's okay, been Lori. some like some some. I think the glitterati is coming for Pete Buttigieg. Like they are, there are some articles about him not being like talking about the LGBT media, and, like influential. Twitter stars, and then the, there's also like uh, there was an article and that he's not sensitive to people of color or to people in the like of the LGBT community, and I I think that's a weak argument. Well, not so much to people of color, I can understand that, but to say like, well, he's not gay enough, which is essentially what people are saying but not saying. Like it's uh, like saying to like flamboyant enough. Well, they're like, well, because he only came out he when he was 35, he doesn't yeah. like. But I mean, imagine coming out. I mean. Tony, you and I came yeah. out later in life. Like we don't identify with every cultural aspect of. Tony LGBT came out on our community. fourth episode. Tony hasn't right. come out yet, so. Uh, but it's it's one of those. I'm things. a great supporter. Yeah, <laughs> he's an ally. Um, Tony's an ally. He's yeah. not here. No, but I, a, I, he he used to say he was on a podcast. To tell, said they talk about gay stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about gay stuff. But I uh, my I guess my point is. I feel like there's a concerted effort to come after Pete, and I think it's all part of Kamala's master plan. Ah, uh, you think so? I do. Um, I don't know. I do feel like um, we shouldn't fault him for because we talked about this, you know, like w- when we talk about Harvey Milk and things like that, like and um, Oliver Stipple, like you know, everyone should come out on their own terms, and it's like. Who knows what Pete's circum- – like, he was in the military, which don't ask, don't tell. Yeah, maybe it was, like, very underwritten. Like, if there's any sign at all, you're out of here. And or just uncomfortable. Indiana, which yeah, small matter. town Indiana, whatever. And so we shouldn't fault him for when he came out. And the thing is – here's my thing. Like, if he is qualified and he's gay, if he did get elected, I mean, that's really all that matters. Like, I don't think he should – if I was a general population person and I wasn't like gay, I wouldn't want him to so like. So if this were 2014, but right, you are. yeah, I wouldn't want him to be like. Well, my biggest priority over everything is like making sure the gay population is taken care of. I want him to have that stance, but what he's our president and leader, and he needs to t- think about everybody and. I don't know. But that was a Barack Obama's thing with like with, with race, right? I mean, yeah. But I, I just, I think, you know, one of the and the, some I, like I, he didn't get certain black votes because he wasn't black but, enough. But I Michelle saw, didn't vote for him. But I saw, <laughs> I saw like a <laughs> common sentiments about Pete. Like, well, he's just not. He needs more life experience. He needs to be. He needs more perspective. I'm like, look, you little Twitter queens. Like, you're tapping behind the keys of a of, of a computer screen. Yeah. This guy yeah, is but fought, I actually but, agree with that. But, but my guy is. But my point is, this guy. I don't guy, want somebody my age. He's my age. This as president. The the point. Well, forget that. But I'm like, he's fought in a war. He has gone to. He went to Oxford. He, my point is, yep. he's had some real life experience. Yeah, yeah. Most than most people yep. who are judging him say, oh, but I can't relate to him. I'm like, this kid has. Well, he's a couple of years younger than you and I, Tony. But I'm like, <laughs> he's got. He's my age. He's got. He's got like real world experience, like, and so yeah. for people to be like, I would need perspective. I'm like, you don't have perspective because yeah. you're living. I don't in this know. Whole I bubble. would, yeah. I mean, my personal opinion is, I um, as mm. far as like the actual like, I, I in a way, I kind of agree with that sentiment. But I, I will say this, I I value ideas over experience. Like, I don't want a Joe Biden. I, I don't want that. I, like, I want somebody that has ideas and enthusiasm and charisma over experience. I think that could be an but he, old he may have a body a la Elizabeth But he Warren. may have a little bit light. I, I kind of agree with Kendall. He may be a little yeah. bit light. I think we might all be on Tim Warren at this point. But <laughs> oh I mean, God. I think... And it, I it, love lesbians. It's probably I think fair. Elizabeth Warren at 72 is better than Elizabeth Warren at 37. Which well, she is was a what, Republican at that age. Right. Is what but, see, is, and that's why I like her, because she thinks for herself. She's not like, I'm going to like do the And... I feel like Elizabeth Warren, I, I do love her. I, I do feel like she um, she morphed from Republican to Democrat. And she saw, like, she wants a healthy economy. And she sees, like, the way we are right now, there's corruption. There's, like, 
industry owns our government and she's against that. And she's like, I'm for like, I think she's very economy driven. Like her number one thing is like economy, but it's. And I think historically the Republican. Okay, Tony is clinging to his guns. I Anyways, I do. So but, angry. but so I will say this, and I'm going to say it at the end of this. So we're talking about election, right? So that's important Erections. to know. But so this is the first week in October, last week of September, first week of October. If you are, especially what year? if you're in Texas, uh, this is the last chance to, like, you need to go register to vote. We have an election coming up. And like you always need to be registered to vote, but if you're not registered to vote, um, we want to keep Bob Dole out of office. Right. Mo- Monday, October 7th, lying? if you're a Texan and probably in similar states. So check your, your website is the last day to register to vote in, in Texas, October 7th. So get, if you're trying to register oh, for this, yeah. if you're trying to vote and then what if election, most of our, most of our listeners live in Prague? Well, they don't, but we do. Former like so- Soviet the, countries. There's a couple of Prague Pragians. Ooh, the are we, we have? That. Do we have the president for you? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, those Soviet. My point is, all this stuff is important, but you have to register. I mean, in right, order yeah, to have yeah, a voice, yeah. you need to register yeah. to vote. You need to be registered to vote, and then you need to vote. So if you're a Texan or any other part of this country, this th- these this week is probably your last week to register to vote. So. Uh, those Texans Monday, October seventh, for for the November election this year, this year, this year. Who? No, a lot What's of states are thirty year? days. Well, in Houston, the mayor's gonna. The uh, mayor, a lot of states is thirty days. Yeah. yeah so get mm-hmm. registered to vote. Okay. Oh, okay. Not for registered? the twenty twenty. We'll we'll preach this more, but I'm just saying. Yes, yeah. It's always important to Tony. You vote in Local every election. elections matter. Tony, oh, have I have you, like all the like in my area. I voted for like we have special elections. Mm-hmm. Special, yeah. Yeah, so like Tony's never missed an election. So exactly. Good, good for you, Tony. We all have to learn from Tony. All right, so let's get into yeah. our topics. Uh, we've we've kikied plenty. Goodness, so, yes. Wow. Uh, over over to. I just you, announced Tony. my engagement, and y'all go off uh, on see. politics. Ooh. Well, yeah. speaking of like long term commitments, Somebody's not for gay Tony marriage. Truman Capote had a long term commitment. So Truman Capote, he was uh, born this week in 1924, September 30th. Um, very interesting figure. I didn't really know a lot about him until I started researching him. But um, so I, I think a lot of people know Truman Capote as the person who wrote Bre- Breakfast at Tiffany's. That's kind of his fame. But um, very interesting uh, story. So Truman Capote was born in New Orleans in 1924. His parents divorced when he was four, so he was shipped off to his mom's family in Alabama and he really had like a lonely couple of years and like we talked about Frida we talked about Andy Warhol where they're kind of infancy or young childhood uh you know really kind of affected who they were so he was very lonely so he actually taught himself to read and write before he was in kindergarten so and he ended up like moving to New York with his mom when he was eight or whatever but um so he because he taught himself to read and write he was just always very like passionate about writing and you know he would say some kids would go home and they would like practice the violin whatever he just loved writing it was his passion so he was a very interesting character so he uh started writing at 11 he was actually won awards when he was 12 for writing he didn't finish high school he just immediately when he was in high school age he started working and did various you know publishing jobs whatever um so he started off kind of writing short stories things like that for magazines and he um really got into like new york society and culture and things like that and so he um you know he he was born in new york no, no. He was born in New Orleans. So he was born in New Orleans. His uh, when he was four, his parents divorced. They shipped him off to his uh, mom's family in Alabama, but then his mom remarried and lived in New York. So um, he moved to New York when he was eight, and he they ended up moving to Connecticut, whatever. But he was from the Northeast and just um, very like seems like intellectual and things like that. Very smart, passionate about writing. Um, so he started writing for like magazines and he would just get like short stories published here or there and a lot of his stuff initially was about fiction and things like that but it was kind of about his life you know and so I think any any time I think somebody does that it kind of hits home and it resonates with people or whatever um 
But kind of a turning point in his career, and I think he was in his uh, 30s, was when he wrote Breakfast at Tiffany's. And so he was very much, when he was young, he was a writer, but he was very much into the party scene, like, you know, celebrities, drugs, partying. Yeah, Yeah, but so initially he was into this, and... So Breakfast at Tiffany's was fiction, but it was kind of drawn on his experiences. And he always used to say, he goes, he was a partier, and he loved, like, the celebrity lifestyle, things like that. And he's like, I'm just just doing research for, like, some future work, you know. Mm-hmm. So wrote Breakfast That's at Tiffany's. That's I say every time I'm out. I tell my parents now, especially. I'm oh, like, me too, me oh, too. This is all for the podcast <laughs> or for economy work. I'm networking. No, I'm networking. when we met networking, and we went home together that night, you said it was just for research. <laughs> it was. I was like, and look where we like, are. Here we are. We're Should ste- I tell that story? I'm still researching. You're stepping to fame right still now. Still researching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Breakfast at Tiffany's was, and he even admits this, it was kind of his transition literally from uh, kind of a, you know, he wrote these short stories. They were kind of fiction, whatever. Um, and when he wrote Breakfast at Tiffany's, it brought him a lot of fame. But he also wanted to – he really wanted to do something, like, serious and, like, kind of meaty. Like, he really wanted to do something where, like, it's a true literary masterpiece. So he did Breakfast at Tiffany's, kind of elevated him. It was made into a movie and things like that. Um, and he – during Breakfast at Tiffany's, he kind of had, like, a very, like, brash – like, there were a lot of swear words and things like that. And some people, like, a little – And it was a whole – it kind of pulled back the curtain on the whole – world that did not exist to these people right exactly yeah don't yeah. take my gay card but i've never seen that movie what well it was a book by truman capote made into a movie it's a movie oh how have you not seen that i movie? mean i know yeah. it's a book but i've I mean, seen the movie i haven't read the book but holly go lightly yeah is this kind of like new york girl that mm-hmm. lives in a cute apartment can barely afford it but she's kind of like living through new york yeah yeah and, and i would say a lot of society at the time even now is probably like that the only the only thing I know about Breakfast at Tiffany's was that the was song. A, it was a yes, song. yes, yes, yes. Because you're so ninety. Yeah, I am. Right. <laughs> He's stuck, stuck in there. 1995 for sure. Get him out. Get him out. Kids. John Marshall Rams forever. Call 1998, <laughs> 98, 98. Rams, Rams, go, go, go. We don't know those references. Okay, sorry. So he, uh, you know, all of this time he's escalating in his career. So he does Breakfast at Tiffany's, and then he reads an article about this. Um, family that was murdered in kansas this farm Mm -hmm. family that was murdered and so he was intrigued by this and so he he went to kansas and he was there for six years off and on did intensive research and ingrained himself in this small town to write in cold blood which was nonfiction, but based on this and he interviewed like during the time he was there they had found the people that killed the The family killers right yeah yes and so that really was his literary masterpiece. Like, it was in-depth, it was journalistic, things like that. So then, he actually, people were on him to like, you're part of high society, you know all these celebrities, you know the dirt. You need to write like an in-depth piece, an intimate portrait, intimate portrait about everybody. And so, he actually got a book deal and started doing this. And so, at the time... Like, when he was kind of coming up, a lot of his stuff was published, like his novellas and things like that were published in magazines, and then they would turn into, like, short novels and things like that. So people were like, you need to do, like, some intimate portraits. What's really going on with this whole – he was friends with Andy Warhol, like that whole scene, you know. Uh, So he started writing some articles for Esquire that were later going to be turned into a book, and – People alienated him. They were like, what? Well, didn't he name names? Oh, yeah, yeah. He was very open. That and, was his And so mistake. people were like, fuck you. Why are you doing this? No. And so, and I think his whole, um, his whole, like his whole life, he loved the party scene. He loved celebrities. He loved drinking, drugs, all this stuff. And when they started alienating him, he just, he couldn't deal with it. And he, he made the, um, he made the statement like for every day you spend on the West Coast you lose some brain cells. So he was in his um Well he thought of himself as a New York Yes. Yeah, yeah, very much. The, 
Yeah, yeah. Intellectual Northeast. That they yeah. like to think of themselves as. Yeah. yeah. So this happens. He gets alienated from his society friends, and he actually bought a place on the West Coast. And that started kind of a downward spiral where he really got into alcohol, drugs. I mean, he was very – I mean, he – would do TV interviews where he didn't even know what he was saying. It was pretty incoherent. And this is like after that. his downfall. Yeah, his downfall. it was like kind of like podcast. a d- downward spiral. So, you know, he had um, he had lost his friends. He moved to the West Coast. He really got into drinking and drugs, and it was kind of a downward spiral. And this was in the seventies or sixties. Seventies. Uh, this was in the sixties and seventies. Yeah, okay. yeah. And so he, um, yeah, it was really kind of sad. And I think. I think two things happened. I think like he, you know, his friends alienated him, but I think part of it was his entire life and identity was I'm part of New York society. Like, you know, because that was his acceptance. Yeah, exactly. Ugly duckling, gay little Mm -hmm. nerd. Yeah. You know, and there are places for those people more so now in 2019. But back then, it's like, they really like me. You know, he was friends yeah, yeah. with Lee Radzewell, which was... And, I mean, let's face it. If you're born in the 20s in the South and you're gay, you fight for acceptance. And if you find your niche of, oh, they accept me, I mean... I think he thought he was entrenched in gay society. And I think... Or not gay society. In society, New York society. society. In New, New York, York society. society thought and he of, was. He actually was. Who is this little rare exotic bird who has a Southern accent who's gay, who's like this little ugly yeah. duckling or whatever. And he was out. Yeah. And he was a fad. Yeah. You know, we've talked about mm. in, in fire in prior episodes where it's like in 2007 when Vogue did the the hottest accessory as a gay friend. Yeah. You know? Um, but he, he was... I actually don't know that he was a fad. I think he was really, truly a part of this society. And when he started turning on them, they were like, F you. You know... See, I disagree. In 1960s New York, if you're gay, and I know he wasn't out, but he was kind of wink, wink. You know, he no, had no, everyone, everyone, knew, everyone knew he was. I do right. want to talk about this. He did, that, but that's you're an expendable. Thing. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're expendable in that capacity in 1960s society when you're rolling with people like Jackie Kennedy's sister. Sister, yeah. You know, yeah. it's easy to. Oh, and the thing is, you serve no purpose to me anymore because you became a little yeah. too uppity. Yeah. Bye. Well, and here's here's the thing too. So after his uh, breakfast at Tiffany's and um, the in cold blood, I mean, he did let it get to his head, and so he had like for Catherine Graham, he had this over the top masquerade ball at the Plaza Hotel in New York City. Mm-hmm. He hosted it. The and party it was, of the century. Yeah, party of the century. And I think it was like over the top, you're kind of a little bit burning out, things like that. And I think when he started spilling the dirt on people, it's like, you're out of here. As, as far as alienation. Well, it's like the original. Point. He was expendable. Yeah, and so that kind of. Yes, he was. Ex- it's easy. You serve up. You're a single gay man. Okay. Everything yeah. in high society is quid pro quo. I give you something, you give something to me. If you're the lone little gay tiny man who's had a few hits in his life, what can you add to my, you know, what are you bringing me, really? I feel it's like yeah. easy to discard him. Like, it's no different than them doing it. A, like, them hooking up with uh, him is no different than, like, uh, a uh, uh, doing, like, a, a hit of, of coke or, like, doing, yeah. a, doing a drug. Mm-hmm. It's just like, yeah. oh, we do this. It's a party favor. And then that's yeah. it. Like, he was you know. always expendable. Yep. Yeah. He always had a shelf life. So this kind of started his downward spiral, and he his literary work suffered after that. He, you know, kind of spent some time on the West Coast, which he historically hadn't, things like that. Um, so, I, I mean, that was kind of his life, and we can get to, like, you know, the end in a bit. But um, during his life, he was openly gay, and so he wasn't, he wasn't very... Um, openly gay, or just didn't deny it. Uh, he didn't really, he didn't deny, he, he wasn't, never dated anybody really, huh? Everybody. Oh no, no, he did it. So okay. he had a long-term partner. Yeah. So he had, he had met this guy. They had been together for years and years. And when he kind of started his, so his, his partner was pretty like grounded and things like that. And so when he kind of started his downward spiral, his partner always referred to the personal and the public, uh, you know, Truman Capote. So 
personally, he was, you know, this person that he, his partner got along with and things like that. But, you know, publicly he was insecure about the image. You know, he was into drugs. He was into like the fame and things like that. Um, so they actually, and he was very extroverted. He, he, Truman Capote was very extroverted into high society. His partner was very, not introverted, but he wanted the quiet life and things like that. And so they really were in love. They they had a connection, and they stayed together till Truman Capote died, but they had split apart. Like, they had separate sex lives in the end, like, for the last several years, not just... That was like our relationship, Kendall. Oh, you had a sex life? <laughs> Oh, I didn't tell you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I find out later <laughs> when I wash the sheets. Uh, da, 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 but yeah, so they they had stayed together as like they Tony's they like too real. <laughs> they were true like friends and everything, but they just as I text your boyfriend, congratulations on your, uh, on your nuptials. No, yeah. it's a sad decline to his life. And actually, when he in the '80s, he um would go to Studio Fifty Four with like yeah, Andy exactly, Warhol, yeah. and yes, he was a legend. But he was also like trying to be around other legends because he had nothing else going on. He was working on this great novel that never came to fruition because he died. Right. But the way I look at Truman Capote, yes, I look at him as a modern day Oscar Wilde, mm-hmm. like huge. Yep. And he's kind of like not the inventor, but he perfected early on the true crime genre. Yeah. Wait, like like our spoopy podcast, True Crime? Yes. Kind of, yes. So he perfected the true crime genre, yeah. but he was to me he was like this gay guy that briefly got it, because we've seen it before maybe. I don't know if you all have, but I've certainly it's a theme throughout a lot of high schools. The gay guy in high school that got in with the popular girls, yeah. and they're like, he thinks he's one of the popular girls. Yep. But really, and see, that's why I think like he's only in that group for a semester. That's why I think this was, was kind of his downfall because he literally was like, he was kind of a literary genius at the time. I mean, he was reading and writing before school. I mean, he was winning awards at twelve, like literary awards. And you know, Breakfast at Tiffany's was major. Like In Cold Blood was major. Um, I have In Cold Blood. I ordered it, but it's like. One of many books I need to read. I'm excited to read it. But I think, you know, his identity was New York society and not, I'm this really awesome, like, literary person. But he was from Alabama. Yeah. But the thing is, all get out unless you like, okay, everyone has, yeah. But the thing is, if his identity would have been like his literary genius and he would have continued that, who knows if they would have flocked to him. Here's the problem. If he had been fabulous, Truman Capote, and by the way, you know, his assistant was for. All the true, true blood years. No, Harper Lee. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who yeah. wrote To Kill a Mockingbird? Right, yeah. Who actually eclipsed him in popularity and prestige? Right, yeah. But if he had been the legend of the literary legend that was like, I don't care what you people think of me, they would have adored right. him until the day he died. No, but exactly. He seemed like the guy that wanted the straight women and see that's to think that's what I think his important. identity was society and not his literary genius and it like could have continued like if he was like and to me there's a correlation to that to how many gay people feel is in like I have to adapt to your society versus being my yeah, own, yeah, yeah. flying yeah. my own freak flag is how we see it in 2019 yeah I think it's a s- multiple things I don't look at him as a sad figure I think the society he had to adapt to was sad in the sense that he was always trying to, am I good enough? But am the thing I is, I don't know enough? that he had Do to like adapt me? to that society because if he, if his identity was like his literary genius and his authorship versus society, he could have probably had a very fruitful life, but he identified with, Oh, soci- New York society. Well, you said is it was life. fruitful. He was sleeping with guys all the time. Well, he was, but they denied, like, I, again, this is why I feel like, Full of fruit. I guess where I, when my comment on, like, he was like a, a party favor drug, like, uh, it, Lauren Bacall, like they, they asked her about her husband, Humphrey Bogart, like they, oh, Truman Capote said that he gave, um, Humphrey Bogart a, uh, a blow job. And she's like, oh no, that never happened. Like, oh, that, he no, just it, appeared it was, to be yeah. desperate. It totally happened. She was yeah. just like, oh no, that would have never like happened. Like Perez but Hilton. She was, but she was like offended. Yo, exactly. Oh my God, he turned into Perez Hilton. Yeah, that's what he. That's what he is. It's like yeah, like favor. desperate. Like you used yeah. to love me. I used to be on the inside. And so, I mean, yeah. poor guy. So he literally was thrown out of uh, 
White House parties under the Kennedy administration for being too intox- intoxicated. Mm, he was an alcoholic. He was like drunk on. Wait, say that again. Into- <laughs> intoxicated. <laughs> he was. Um, he said too much beer to say it. <laughs> he was, you know, like on talk shows, he was like incoherent and had to be like kind of, you know, relieved from being on the talk shows and things like that. Um, and he became a recluse. It's Which, you sad. know what, in 2019 makes him even more of a badass. Because if you look up Truman Capote clips on YouTube, for example, here he is always with that same tilted black fedora with his little capelet. Yeah. So actually, and he's living his own, even if it's kind of tragic at the end, He's living his own damn gay life in 60s and 70s and 80s. Yes, and actually, so as far as the gay rights uh, movement is concerned, he never really embraced the whole gay rights movement officially, And, um, but he is really credited with he was himself. Like, in his dress, his appearance, his mannerisms, he didn't try to hide it. And so a lot of people credit him with, you know, a big part of, like, the gay rights movement is just being yourself. You know, we've talked about this before. Like if people don't like gay people, being yourself and being out is revolutionary. Yeah. And so they credit him with for his time. He wasn't like, I'm not going to fight for the gay rights movement, but he was himself. He dressed, he was flamboyant, his mannerisms. And so they really credit with, and he, he encouraged people to, you don't need to fight for gay rights, but just be yourself. Like, just if that's the way you want to dress, that's the way you want to. But act, you know do what? It. Him fighting for gay rights movement would have hurt his career. Yeah, because no, and I don't certain... think people fault him for it. But they actually kind of commend him for you weren't out there like overtly fighting, but by you being yourself, you did your part. Well, not only the... that, but there's a certain benefit of you being the only gay guy in the right. You know, well, it's that whole kind of concept that of. Crab. Uh, um, the crab in the barrel thing yep. to where yeah. there can only be so many gay guys. Yep. And that expression is other crabs will pull down the one crab that's about to get out because it's like, you know, exactly, us yeah. against each other type thing. But yes, he can be a historical figure. Yes, he can be amazing, radical, and all that. And also want no one, no contemporary to do that near him at all which is you think maybe so we mentioned the Put- the buddha judge thing like you did you say Judge? do you think that there's a parallel there it's just mm. like the gays are coming for him no. and you don't think so no mm. what i think is i think the pete buddha judge when you are when you're not a white heterosexual christian person we look at you as if like okay you're going to take on every nine white heterosexual Christian persons struggle because surely you understand what it's like to face discrimination. So we look to gay people to understand what it's like to be black. We look at black people to understand what it's like to be gay. And we put a lot of pressure on them to fulfill every single societal, to be a champion for every group that's not that. I think it's, um, I understand it because I'm hopeful that, you know, Kamala Harris understands LGBT issues, queer issues. Um, But I think it's unfair. So I think what we're doing is we're expecting Pete Buttigieg, who's running for president, to speak for all queer issues. No, why on earth would we expect him to understand what it's like to be um, black or brown trans which is really or even even gay. Like, I mean, he, he, I mean, I, I can relate to it some, to some extent, like you grow up all your life. Like you're, you're, especially if you don't come out to your 35, you're denying everything that is your, like, that's gay. Yeah. Like, you're like, I can't do that. I can't do that. Cause if I like RuPaul's drag race or if I like, you know, a martini or, uh, then people are going to think I'm gay. So you're totally denying yeah. that. So you have to retrain yourself to be like, Oh, I don't care if my drink is a pink color. And he came out in 2015. He has his own... He's not perfect because he's running for president. He's got his own damn journey. That's another reason why, hello, it is not a benefit that he's 37 running for president. Why don't you be 50? Why don't you be 60? You know what I mean? He needs to live Just like I, I love Barack Obama. I think he ran too soon in 2008. So glad he won. Doesn't mean I would ever vote against him. But... 
But I would argue be a little more battle tested. Buddha Judge has has actually been on the battlefield. He's lived, excuse me. He's had mayor his, of South Bend, Indiana. <laughs> he was Stop he it. fought in a war in Afghanistan. And read some of the interviews he says about that. I, I he know he was like he downplays that so much to where he's basically a clerical position my, in the base. My point is, you stamp and you know this as a flight attendant, and you've advocated for this on the, the front line. The more that you you stamp up uh, your your passport, the more like you're like okay, you experience different cultures you know life it, yeah it's no not like you just i don't up. agree with that because the military is the white military part of it is overwhelmingly conservative republican they go to their base in afghanistan that they're well, not allowed to leave here we no that's what you were wanting no me. if you're going to say travel is like but I'm, somehow giving you an education the military does not do that it actually makes you conform to a very specific point of view. Uh, well, I would agree to that to some extent, but he's on, like he's interacting with locals in Afghanistan. Like you see all the pictures. My point is like, he's had to confront more diversity than we, than many of us have had to do. Well, uh, he's talking to people in Afghanistan in a war, war torn uh, country. He is as a but mayor. That he's doesn't gotta, necess- that doesn't uh, give you as a mayor. He's got he's forced to compromise. So did with George. People. You know who's in the military? George W. Bush. George no. H. W. Oh, Bush. Oh, barely. Well, no. he H. George H. W. Yes. Bush. H. Ronald H. Reagan w. was. Bush. Eh. But but the uh, thing is, like, someone clapped back. To Dwight me. Eisenhower was. But uh, Richard Nixon was. Yeah, well, Who are still Dwight Eisenhower? And Nixon? My point is, they're what still. I'm talking about, they're still it can more battle conservative views as well. Fine, but they're still more battle tested than some of these Twitter queens who are like who've never who went to a state school and you look at their Instagram profiles. They're I all actually at these beach parties with, with their I shirts it, off and like in their six pack abs, like living a fabulous look at, life. You like, know who else no. is in the military? Uh, the LBJ LBJ should have gotten us. We never should have been in Vietnam. So LBJ right. being in the vil- military was actually, was he brainwashed to say, once you're in the fight, you cannot get out until you win, 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 win. Mm. Like there are negatives to being in the military. I, agree, yeah. I don't think that's necessary. I, I, they brainwash you. I'm, trust I'm me. Not, I'm not saying that. that that's I dated a guy and my, this is all the experience uh, I need. The, but, and he but, would talk about how <laughs> brainwashed is, he was in the Navy. He would talk about how brainwashed they were and how you cannot question. No one questions. You are just grunts. Right. I agree with that. You know, so you go in. He even said that he didn't. This is the hor- he cheated on me with so many people. Horniest man I've ever known. Oh, he is said, he cute? "Is he cute?" Once he got into uh, boot not camp, me. they're not talking. He about was me. he couldn't even get an erection after all those shots they gave him. He thinks they gave him a shot. This is totally conspiracy theory, not it like me, but anyway. In other words, uh, they were so you do as we tell you to do. You d- never question it. Whatever. I don't think that's necessarily a positive thing. Well, in in military, you, in in battle, that's what you need to happen. Yeah. All right. So, but in normal, as life, you talk about no. Pete Buttigieg, no, my my point is like when you have to interact with different cultures, like that's a that's a significant thing. We've veered off way. You from can do that on vacation, Truman Capote, but girl, uh, go on a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I mean, the, we, in, any Good closing candidate. comments on on Truman there? No, so I mean, poor guy. He just, uh, you know, he, you know, was on this downward spiral. He became a recluse, and he ended up uh, dying in his friend's home. Just, um, you know, he and his partner were they were together, but very separate. And so, yeah. The interesting thing about uh, what you, what you said about Truman Capote is like he was out there. But didn't really embrace it. Like he was, he he, he, he was, was living ad- within his times. But he yeah. was advocating for. A- yeah, I mean, he he just kind of was who he was, and it was, uh, you know, I I guess accepted or. And he benefited from that. Yeah, yeah but but he was advocating for certain. Like he <laughs> he wanted. I mean, his position outwardly was something of like LGBT rights. My life is of LGBT rights. I'm speaking to it. Yeah, like but I mean, he not, wasn't like I'm not actively like, promo- but I'm not actively know, promoting because he was out. But I, I say that. Yeah, I mean, he was openly. He didn't deny he was homosexual. But he was out, but let's not talk about it at all. Well, yeah. Uh, it's a mi- can we say no. it's a mixed bag? He would probably a mixed bag. He yeah. would talk about it, but, but he I wasn't mean, doing interviews. The thing is, on, he didn't he, try to hide his mannerisms. He didn't try to hide his dress. He didn't try to hide the fact that well, he had a long term partner. He, had a dress. Like, he wasn't pulling in Ellen and being like, "I'm only on the cover of Time." Like, I'm out. Like, yeah, but, but he, he was, was just out. like, "I'm not going to fight for gay rights, but I'm not. I'm just going to be myself." But and, speaking to that, like you, the you know, if we switch topics, like designing women had a little bit of element of that, right? 
Like there was a the 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 gay icon from Designing Women is like a known like everyone loves her. Suzanne Sugarbaker. But in life, in real life, she was not. Uh, oh, she well, was we'll a talk big old, about She that. was a big old bitch. Um. So, this is my big hint to change the topic. So, what is it? Uh, Designing Women premiered on CBS September 29th, nineteen eighty six. It ran for seven seasons until May nineteen eighty three. It was about four women who were worked in an interior design firm, and one man who was the is he gay or is he not uh, van slash delivery driver. It included Julia Sugarbaker, who was the president, who was this kind of like elegant, sophisticated, sassy mouth, liberal Southern woman, whom, okay, you've told me this before. I've been told this a few times. I've been. I've reminded people of Julia Sugarbaker. I didn't tell you that because I don't remember the show that well. I remember the show, but but yes, I remember you telling me that. Oh, that I told you that. Well, just like Julia would do. So yeah. basically, that confirms it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Tony, how familiar are you with um, designing women? Yeah, very. What does yeah mean? Very, He's very, very, really. Yeah. I mean, it's I saw it, but yeah. I couldn't like. Like well, for me, I can't like, quote episodes, but I know all the characters. Like designing like, women, I don't Charlene, know. Designing women, yeah. like I remember my mom watching it, and so I was watching it, but I don't remember the lines. I well, your really mom guess. must be a gay man because let me tell you this. My mom, bless my mom. So my, we, my mom. <laughs> we talked about your Golden Girls, which you love, which is like your show. Is this show. your Golden Girls? We talked about Lynn Grace, which is like your Tony's Golden Girls. This is Kansas. well, designing women is my. Tony's Golden Girls is Thomas's Will and Grace's. Yeah. Yeah. Kendall's. So if you can follow that. Because I grew up in uh, Louisiana, having always, I mean, my mom was totally interested in, my mom and my grandma, interior design. And this was a base. This mm-hmm. was a southern interior show design firm? Wait, based you didn't call in an interior you design didn't call your grandmother firm. Gr- grandma, did you? I called her, well, I called this one that I'm talking to Grammy. Grammy. And then I called the other one grandmother, which is like the formal, formal southern name. I call my grandma grandmother just because it's fun. But yeah, okay. So Grammy, mom. Yes. So Grammy was the one. Designers. But anyway, so it was about Julia Sugarbaker, the president. Um, the president. Suzanne, the president of the firm. Suzanne, who was her sister, who was like, who was the silent in the show. She was the silent partner, so she yeah. gave all the money and brought in the clients. But she was this sassy beauty queen. I wouldn't call her a slut like Blanche was. No, but she was but a she serial was marrier. More like, yes, she like had she lots was. Of husbands. She yeah, was lots of husbands who had money. She was like, Ooh. but beauty queen, beauty queens. First of all, it's a very southern tradition. Southern. Does that tradition. make sense? Yeah. Like the debate upon. Uh, beauty queen, beauty pageants, all that kind of stuff. It's still very alive in the South. Wait, like, first of all, I'd like to think such as the Iraq. Yeah, she was from such as that the girl. Iraq, yes, was from South and Carolina. There are a lot of people in a lot of countries and a lot of students who like the map, and they're all is such. All right. As well, can you explain the to the people of America Sorry. what that means? I don't know. It's a beauty con- beauty contestant from what is 2007. Miss America South from South Carolina. Yes, Check Miss her out on Teen YouTube. USA you, YouTube. YouTab. YouTube. You got to tell the people what you're talking about Sorry. when you go off on your Tourette's tangents. All right. Thank you. Right, Tony? Yes. Tony's on. <laughs> I <ate> this right. <laughs> and then there was <laughs> uh, Mary Jo Shively, played by Annie Potts, who was yes. the head designer. And Charlene Frazier, who was the office manager Charlene. slash country mm-hmm. bumpkin on the group. So yeah. this is all a bunch of Southern women. They were each kind of playing seri- Southern, Southern stereotypes. Yeah. Different. Um, yeah. But they were, it was actually a liberal bent. And the reason for that is the person that created the show sold it, had it bought by CBS it was called Linda Bloodworth Thomason. She was from um, little rock. She was also the, not only the head writer, but she was the only writer. She would write each show in five to six hours. No way. Yeah. And she was, I knew her back. Okay, That's so crazy. in the early 90s, my parents have always been very Republican. I am no longer very Republican, but I remember them talking badly about Linda Bloodworth Thomason because she was this big liberal. She was from Little Rock, and she loved the Clintons, especially Hillary Clinton. Oh, I bet. Talk she about was like, so mm. they worked, Linda worked lots of Clinton stories into designing women. 
uh, episodes. Now, the main person, Dixie Carter, actually was a very conservative Republican. Yes, I knew that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. From Tennessee. And she Wasn't ha- she married to Houstonian? Hal Holbrook? I don't know if she's married to Houstonian, but she was married to the person. I thought she person. did stuff at the Alley Theater. She did, and she died in Houston. I don't know if that's because she um, was... Oh my God! Thomas is doing a live session. And it threw me off. I'm sorry. He's doing. He's filming oh us for the focus. Focus. Yeah, okay. But she died. She was in, conservative Republican. Yeah, so she was a conservative Republican, which totally went against her character, which yeah. was like a liberal, yeah, very pro gay rights, pro civil rights, all that. Pro kind of woman, stuff. like yeah. So she had an agreement with the producers on the show that said, every time you make me say something political that I disagree with. Hey. We, You're gonna allow me to can we pause for a second? say something. Well, we're, well, no, no, no. Keep recording. But I just want to do a live shout out because Dusty. Hey, watching. Dusty. Hey, Dusty. Oh. All right, we're still recording. Thomas Dusty. is doing it. Love you. Nobody can hear you, Thomas. Woo. Hi. All right. So we're just doing that. We broke I'm in. so sorry, Bye. Thomas. Without his mic, broke in and told us to get online. I apologize to our international viewers that are on a different time zone. And might have a different taste level than these my co-hosts. Um, but wait, so she, what was the agreement like with her and the? So each time she was required to say like a liberal speech or whatever, she said, "Okay, on a future episode, you're gonna allow me to sing a song," because she liked to sing. She came oh, okay. from like musical theater. So if you ever see Julia Sugar Baker on Designing Women singing a song, it's because in the past. She had no way. Yes. That's crazy. Yes, because she was that conservative Republican. She hated what they made her do, because that's not who she was. She described Dixie Carter, who's the actress that played Julie yeah. Sugar Baker, described herself as like a traditional. You don't ever disagree with anybody. You want everybody to like you. So that's not the character of Julia Sugar. No, Baker. she was like ruffle feathers. Like I'll tell you what I right, think. Right. I'm yeah. going to tell you whatever I yeah. want to tell you. So she was the main character. Delta Burke played her sister, Suzanne Sugarbaker. Like Loved we said, her. She was my the favorite. beauty queen, silent partner of the firm. And then Mary Jo Shively, played by Annie Potts, was the head designer. She was kind of like the common sense. She was, yeah. She was a single mom, like, you yeah, know. Like yeah, like the least southern, southern stereotype of them all. Right. And then Charlene Frazier, played by Jean Smart, who was kind of like the... They made her look dumb, but also on the show, they wrote her to be very smart at the same time. It was kind of playing against Southern stereotypes. Yeah. Um, but this show really, I remember, I remember growing up watching the show and being obsessed with it. And also knowing that I really couldn't tell anybody I was obsessed with it. Why were you obsessed with it? Well, for one, it took place in the South, which okay. I was in New Orleans. Yeah. Um, for two, for me, it took place in a tier design firm, which I now work in yeah you just um, gravitate but it goes to the same thing we talked about with like golden girls for example it was tough women tough strong women being accepting of people that weren't like them yeah that would put people in their place that might pick and, on the game i mean having their own careers like this was <laughs> what the 90s and things like that i mean like because all of them like charlene was single uh mary joe was like divorced raising her two kids you know and uh Su- well i mean um like suzanne was uh you know she had money but uh julia was like running that firm so like they were you know independent like successful business women too well you know what's interesting as we look through kind of the gay cyclical what do we accept what to eat? Because you know we were talking about Pete Buttigieg earlier. Say Pete, everything he encapsulates now. If he ran in nineteen ninety eight, I think the gays would be a lot more like fanboy about him. But now because we're he was like twenty in nineteen ninety eight. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But because now we're we've gotten more rights, we're a little more critical of people, yeah, I think. Yeah. Is, I mean, yeah. I appreciate that to some extent, but again, um, again, well, this is because... But the people what I'm saying upset. is, yeah. uh, Dixie Carter in 1998 with Metro Weekly gave an interview where she said, 
Well, they they flat out asked her, "What do you think about gays being allowed to marry?" To marry, and she say, "I'm struggling with it. I grew up very southern." Hmm. She was born. She was 70 when she died in 2010. So who knows? I don't know how old she would. That would have made her then. But she said, "I'm struggling with it." She's like, I'm, "I'm leaning towards that, but it's something about the way I was raised. I can't quite get over yet." The mm. fact that marriage is to procreate and marriage is supposed to be mate- between a man and a woman. Yet I love gays so much. And I, there's something very human about that that I don't think we allow in 2019. Can I say something? Con- but was rev- Yes, but what was revolutionary in 1998. So in 1998, you can be considered, oh my God, a gay icon. She kind of likes us. We think what she said was is that she might be okay with us. Yeah. Yeah, she and wasn't just years anti. years later, because yeah. I remember when she died in 2010... And the articles coming out were she wasn't as gay friendly as you think she'd be. And now we're looking at it <coughs> in the context of what 1998 would be. And it sounds, oh, my God, she was ahead of her time. But go ahead, Thomas. I was just going to say, like, even as in a in a same sex relationship that you and I were in, Kendall, I did not like it took me a while to be like, could we actually get married? Because and, and aside from our personal like, but I was just like, I didn't like I grew up. In a, mm. in a sense, like yeah. two men, like it's fine that you're in a relationship, but can you get married? And then I, like, I came over the hump, and I'm like, I started to see it out, like how two people of the same sex could be not just in a relationship, but actually yeah. be married. So I can appreciate which 2019 gays I don't think get like. Because yeah. especially ones that are under thirty, like I don't think they're like yeah. this has always been a world where you can yeah. just be gay and married. And no, I'm I like, kind of agree. No. Like so. I'm from like small town Montana, the Cowboys, Montana, you know, it's very rugged. And I remember when I first moved to Houston and I would go to like uh BRB, the gay country bar. Brazos River Bottom. Yeah. Yes. I and bar. I would just see these like two very masculine, very cowboy. Lesbians? No guys oh. <laughs> dancing. And for me, for a while, I was like, that's just so weird to me yeah. to see like two butch masculine guys dancing together like yeah, yeah it just and, and, and twirling I, each other and yeah, yeah just, i get it and, like, and I, now it's like oh but i mean there's an adjustment right like but especially so this is why i'm like the again we'll bring it back back to pete Buttigieg. like i can get it if you just came out like and you're not totally like yay people i mean granted he he went all in because he i mean um, figuratively and literally i'm sure like to fingertips and all is that what because you're oh. because he got ma- he came out and then eventually dated someone that got married immediately but I I like I struggled like how are two like I was always for you know same sex couples getting married and having kids but I'm like uh, uh, having to like kind of live it practically I'm like how do two men like raise how do how do two men raise a kid together right like where's the mom like how do you explain that like how do you put a kid in that situation yeah i was feeling guilt about that so i I like so when you've got a straight person who grew up in the south in the 80s and 90s like and is in her 40s and 50s like but is all of a sudden thrusted as this gay icon i can get where i think we need to have understanding for people that are like i love you for everything you are but i'm not quite Give me some time. Yeah, I and I don't think that's happening nowadays. But anyways, but there's so many great things about designing women, like iconic moments, iconic scenes that like people just. Well, can't to me, it. for the gays, there are two, two instances, two episodes, that I think are the most gay appropriate, and the first is the AIDS episode. So the yeah. the. The writer slash creator, Linda Bloodworth Thomason, her mom died of AIDS. She was actually, her mom was diagnosed the first season in 1986. No way. Yes. So she, her mom got a blood transfusion from Red Cross and caught AIDS in 86. And Linda Bloodworth, who was already a liberal, a rare liberal Southern, um, was like, oh my God. She came on set and said, oh my God, my mom has AIDS. And people in 19... 19- 86 were like what yeah (laughs) your mom's a gay man because there was just no understanding of it right you know so she had a blood transfusion from the red cross a lot of people didn't know you can even get it from them at that point because aids was just a few years old right 
And uh, Linda Bloodworth talked about how she would go to the hospital with her mom and we would be in the same units as a lot of, you know, overwhelmingly gay men. Because some hospitals at the time, like AIDS patients, were in a separate They were quarantined, yeah. yes. Yeah. So here's her old mom quarantined with the gays, and she would hear the way the gays were treated. And at one point, she overheard someone saying that it's killing, someone said, well, it's killing all the right people. Yeah. In other words, these people are sinners, so it's calling the right. Let's get rid of them. They're yeah. just sinners. They're not bringing anything. There's a queers, yada, yada, yada. So she wrote an episode specifically for gay AIDS positive men to where, so the episode goes, I guess with the, the person who had AIDS, no coincidence. Kendall. <laughs> His yeah. name was Kendall Dobbs. Yeah. Was it really? Yeah. Mm. This is back when Kendall was a man's name. So when I was growing up, side Wait, note. Is it now a woman's name? Yes. Now it's a woman's name. Because what? Of fucking now, Kendall now, Jenner. Now it's a gay man's name. Fuck. So when I was growing up, you never met females named Kendall. Anyway, I've never met a female named Kendall. But anyways, anyways, Kendall so Jenner. That's why because we're too old. Kendall Dobbs was a young man dying of his AIDS, mm-hmm. um, and he asked the women of Designing Women, the Sugar Baker and Associates Fine, Design right. Firm, to des- to z- mm-hmm. design his funeral. funeral. Da-da, yep. da-da. And then he stops by and shakes Charlene's hand when he came in, uh, the office manager. Yep. And Charlene shook his hand, you know, grabbed it didn't wasn't repulsed by him and he said oh wow even people on the aids ward the the nurses won't even shake my hand so the people were all about the people Mm -hmm. the design firm mary joe charlene all them were like oh my god that's horrible you know you're still a human if people can't even touch you and all that and remember this is 1987 when this episode came out and in the episode there was this old client very conservative client that was in the firm called imogene that just happened to be visiting and let's see oh my god imogene says i did not do the correct amount of research (laughs) imogene tells joya as far as i'm concerned this disease has one thing going for it it's killing all the right people and that was taken directly from Linda Bloodworth Thomason's being in a yeah, hospital yeah. and overhearing in real life. Somebody said, well, it's killing yeah. all the right people, which is so the feeling. I mean, you're older yeah. than me. I hate to break this news, but you're older than me, Tony. And don't you remember being a certain age and being like, if you're gay, you're going to die of AIDS or someone's yeah. going to kill you. Yeah. That is literally what my dad said when I came out of the closet. I'm. I, I do feel even now, like, it's in the back of, like, my mind, especially, like, I mean, this is why I'm so about, like, protected sex and everything, because, it, it, I don't know, I just grew up in the, like, in the 80s and 90s, where it's like, it was a death sentence, and it just, that's always in the back of my mind, and I remember, like, in the Golden Girls, like, when Rose, she thought she had it from a blood transfusion, you know, Sophia's, like, Writing on the coffee cups, like, oh, I don't want to drink from our cup because, you know, Rose drank from it. And I feel like at that time, you know, it hadn't been around long enough. So even though they said, oh, you can only get it from blood, or we didn't know. Yeah. Like, you didn't know. And so people were paranoid about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember at the time, okay, so being a little queer kid, I was born at 82, which is very, very recent, right? Okay, can we all agree on that? Very recent, yeah? Okay. Yeah. No. So there's something interesting about being born around 82. Okay. It's because I was young enough You're my brother's slash age. old enough to remember that whole gay AIDS hysteria to where it's mm-hmm. like, you're just going to get it. It's just inevitable. In fact, my best friend, Martha, who's been on the Quiz Show edition. Love Martha. Hey, Martha. She, her best friend was gay, different one. Um, her second the, best friend in the late nineties, and she was, she found out he was having sex with his boyfriend without a condom, and she said, "How can you have sex without a condom with your boyfriend? Don't you know you're gonna make AIDS? <laughs> make <Because> AIDS? She, <laughs> she thought you just stirred it up like the recipe was a 
make butt aid and yeah. a penis. Yeah. So there was so much confusion about yeah AIDS and all of that. And um, take wait, when was this that she said that to him? Late nineties. Last, oh last year. Last <laughs> year. Right. Martha, I saw her last week. She's like, oh, "You gonna make AIDS?" <laughs> and he, you're still trying to get that recipe right. Well, so, I'd like to get the recipe right. Second famous, most famous scene from Designing Women. There is a classic, classic. Oh, classic. The, right. and this to, is like the this. gay iconic. I feel classic. like everybody is like my friend Greg can recite this verbatim. Like the hold up, I know you're good. all trying to speed me up, but I'm not finished. Well, Thank you're so, you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, so the second I'm part of I'm that great time. episode, I'm having a great time, is that Mary Jo was teaching. She was all nervous about teaching sex ed education course at her daughter's school and none of the local conservative people wanted to do it she was the only one that thought it was necessary and her thing was she wanted to be a pro condom advocate and she said at the meeting at the end of this whole meeting after julia chewed out imogene oh wait i I didn't get to that that's important (laughs) so anyway once Imogene says, as this, far this as I'm concerned, this disease rails. has one thing going for it. It's killing all the right people. Joya tells Imogene, Imogene, get serious. I've known you for 27 years, and all I can say is if God was giving out sexually transmitted diseases to people as punishment for sinning, then you would be at the first one at the clinic. How was that? Was that good? That was good. That was, that was amazing. Like, I, I thought well, it was there. Let's watch okay, the episode. Actually, I do remember like a little side note on Designing Women. There was one where Mary Jo, so Mary Jo, she was like divorced. She was raising her kids because her husband was off doing what, like living his new life. Um, she took Best her, life. she took her daughter, like they were get, going through the car wash and the car wash had all these like uh, bumper stickers or whatever. And, her daughter's like, oh, I want that one. And it was a rainbow. And her husband, her ex-husband, freaked out. He goes, you know that's like a gay, this you know. When? What was this on? This was in Designing Women. So oh, Mary Jo, know. like, her daughter, like, there was all these bumper stickers. And she goes, I want that one. She goes, okay, get it. And she knew it was, like, gay representation. It was, like, rainbow. She didn't care. But her ex-husband was like, ugh, I don't want that on the van, you know. Well, the colors were clashing. Mm-hmm. He, he was, was gay. He was mad. Exactly. He was cute, too. Ooh. So on the same, same AIDS episode, Mary Jo went to speak at her daughter's um, school for sex ed, basically. And there were all these parents there to protest and have a big deal about it. And she was just talking about why you need to wear a condom. And that was controversial in 1987. And I remember because condom was like... You don't mention condoms. That's for bad people when I was growing up. But she basically said, she said in 1987, condoms are not about not getting pregnant anymore. They're now about preventing death. And it's X amount of, I think she said 25,000 people can be prevented from getting a life threatening disease each year. If you just put on a condom. Because back then in 1987, it was a death sentence. There was it was, no, yeah. There was no. There were yeah. no like maintenance drugs to where mm-hmm. you could just have it use it as a chronic or have it as a chronic disease or whatever. And that was huge at the time. And I remember being a little preacher's kid in Louisiana, and watching these shows in secrecy with the volume low, because it was controversial back then to have a an episode on CBS at any time of day to say you should be using a condom because condoms meant you were having sex outside of marriage. And right. It was yeah, all yeah. this. It was a completely different time. Yeah, I agree. So there was a second episode to me that is the most gay centric <gasps> called the beauty contest. Oh my God. This is iconic. Yes. Iconic. Marjorie. <laughs> So, Tony, so most gay bars in the cities, there's always one gay bar that plays, like, videos, and they have a VJ and all that kind of stuff. And if you, the gays my age, know this clip of Julia Sugar Baker. Uh, I know it. What is it? <laughs> the, like, the little big lead up. Okay, I'm really leading up to this. All right. It's with Marjorie. So here's the backstory. 
So on season one, episode two, um, Mary Jo's daughter wants to be in a beauty pageant. And Mary Jo's like, no, 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 I'm too liberal and beautiful. And I don't shave my, you know, vagina and all that kind of stuff. Because she was, that's what liberal in the 80s was. What? Ugh. She wore a condom. <laughs> right. Condom. So uh, she enters the beauty pageant. And Suzanne, who's like the beauty pageant queen, is all about it. And she's like, let me show you all the benefits of being a beauty pageant girl. And Suzanne had won all these different pageants. She was Miss Georgia World 1976. She was there to be supportive. But also at the same time, she was like, I'm about to turn 29 and I'm so old. You might as well just kill me, basically, is how the episode went. Was she really turning 29 or Well, older? here's Thank the twist. You. Jesus. Here's the twist. She thought she was turning 29. They later found her birth certificate at the end of that episode, and she was turning 30. Gasp. We don't even say that word. She looked that about word 30. in this. Uh, right? Well, that's the hair. This is the 80s. That blue eyeshadow. Thirty. When was that? Don't I remember. know. So she's like training Claudia, Mary Jo Shively's um, little daughter, and then in the dressing room, there's some old drag queens, well, current drag queens that were making fun of Suzanne Sugarbaker for being the old, yep. washed up, tired drag queen, and then the most iconic dialogue in all of. Julie, Gay what history happened? What happened? Happened, and we're gonna relive it now because I can't describe that to you. Are you filming? So we're gonna describe it to you now because we can't. Um, I can't explain it. This is too much a part of gay history. Okay. So the gay intern is so. gonna have a rare walk-on speaking moment. Hey everyone. Yes. Yeah. Where we relive this. Now, if his acting yes. is not so good, just what the fuck? understand it's because the only time he's ever acted is when he acted straight from zero Age to 12. Zero to yeah, 17. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to need an assistant over here to help me with this. Yes. Yeah. How do you move that thing? Okay. So we're going to do this dialogue. Are you all ready for this? Yes. I'm waiting for it. What's okay. going on? Action. So. Wait, I need an assistant. Oh my god, you should have sat over here. I could scroll for you. Hurry up. Okay, y'all ready? We're doing the Suzanne Sugar Breaker. This is all gonna be edited out later, okay? Nope. Of course, yeah. Yes. Okay, so. Okay, I'm gonna start it, okay? Okay. Are you ready? I'm starting it, excuse me. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. We're editing it all this out. Hold on. Hold on. I'm looking for it. Excuse <laughs> me. Okay. Excuse me. Aren't you Marjorie Lee Winnick, the current Miss Georgia World? Why, yes, I am. I'm Georgia Sugarbaker, Suzanne Sugarbaker's sister. I couldn't help overhearing part of your conversation. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't know anyone was here. Yes, and I gather from your comments there are a couple of other things you don't know, Marjorie. For example, you probably didn't know that Suzanne was the only contestant in Georgia pageant history to sweep every category except congeniality. And that is not something the women in my family aspire to anyway. That's really not. Or that when she walked down the runway in her swimsuit, five contestants quit on the spot. That's real. Or that when she emerged from the isolation booth to answer the question, what would you do to prevent Cold War? She spoke so eloquently of patriotism, battlefields, and diamond tiaras. Grown men wept. That's really something, but... And you probably didn't know, Marjorie, that Suzanne was not just any Miss Georgia. She was the Miss Georgia. She didn't twirl just any baton. That baton was on fire. And when she threw that baton into the air, it flew higher, further, faster than any baton has ever flown before, hitting a transformer and showering the darkened arena with 12,000... Oh, with sparks, and when it finally did come down, Marjorie, my sister caught that baton, and 12,000 people jumped to their feet for 16 and one half minutes of uninterrupted, thunderous ovation as flames illuminated their tear stained face. And that, Marjorie, just so you will know, and your children will someday know, is the night the, the lights, lights went, went out, out in, in Georgia. Georgia. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Well, now you, you do. do. <laughs> okay, so if you haven't heard that, you need to go to Hulu 
where uh, Designing Women is on. It's episode two of season one and watch the greatest moment in television, television gay history. It's ever. crazy that, the, that it was that early. Like, I feel like a lot the of second the, episode. Yeah. I know. Yeah. A lot of the like major Golden Girls stuff was like way later. Like their first few it hasn't were, even happened yet. They were feeling each other out, you know. Ew. Well, you know, visual. Blanche, that's how she does it. So that's that's the your gay like that that is your gay gay show gay episode, Kendall. Mm-hmm, yeah. All right. Well, I love that. All right. It's a good. So we got them all. So uh, Tony, Golden Girls, me, Will and Grace. Kendall designing women. All right. All of them have been done. We can. This is the series finale of. God, what are we going to talk about now? No no more TV shows. It's not the series finale. We have something important to talk about. So. This is true. It's October. And it's October. What do you think about? LGBT History Month. Kendall was going to say his birthday. (laughs) Kendall's like. Halloween. I was going to say Halloween. Halloween. I'm not stealing your slender. Our spoopy was going to say Halloween. 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 Yeah, you're right. Thank you, Tony, for pointing that out. Yes, LGBT History Month. Different than Pride Month, which is in June. Uh, and so, yeah. Uh, so think about what other history months do we have? We have African American History Month. Yeah, Women's History. And that's in February. Women's History Month. That's in March. Hispanic Heritage Month. Here, in, I, I, That one's an interesting one. Maybe they're typical uh, latins are late because it doesn't happen till middle september through middle of october but whatever latins are always late hey i can i can vouch for that they don't have a full month they have two half months two half months yes so so such a but the gays are on time because better parade october 1st kicks off lgbt history month uh that started in 1994 uh by a history teacher in missouri named uh rodney wilson so rodney wilson was like thinking he was teaching his class early 1994 uh after a a lesson on the holocaust sat back and reflected and we're like this is some serious stuff and he's thinking about that he's thinking also about the context of there are other uh celebration months like again we just talked about african-american history month women's history month and he's like there needs to be an opportunity for us to celebrate the LGBT community for its heritage, its community. We need to recognize the the achievements of the LGBT community from not just from just being great people, but also not just from, from the front, but back to the back. But too. Yes, from our our celebrating like we need to have a month that also celebrates our successes and challenges in history, science, the arts, and sports. But which month? The, which was a because again we have Pride Month, right? In yeah. June. So how do you? What like? Why do we need another month? How did he decide October? The gays love Halloween. The gays love Halloween is not the reason he, they decided October. What? Uh, are you sure? He's an educator. The point was not just to celebrate LGBT history, but was to like educate people in LGBT history and particularly edu- educate students so when are students in school uh yeah yeah you could do june but that's not gonna Nobody's work in school like, yeah so it's like the, they're still paying attention in october <laughs> yeah yeah which is true as an educator now i can say that they after <laughs> after october you lose them <laughs> but if the intent was to educate students june just wasn't going to work so you couldn't just leverage the pride month uh and october was free there weren't again we talked about the other months um and it was during the school year and the month already had october was already recognized because it had national coming out day on october 11th and was also the month that the the that there was lgbt marches on washington that in 1979 and in 1987 way back when so he put together a proposal. He sent it to his uh, gay bestie, John, John de Rice, uh, John de Boyce. Pete Buttigieg. No, <laughs> not <laughs> Pete Buttigieg. John, he was closeted back Pete then. Pete Buttigieg would have been like twelve at that point. But he sent it to his bestie, John de Rice, uh, who was going to, uh, who was attending Ohio State at the time. They exchanged some notes, and she kind of made some revisions, and she said, "Let's do this." So together, they sent this out. Uh, and got a lot of interest in this concept. So they sent it out to the Gerber Hart Library which, and Archive in Chicago, which is a, a library that collects, preserves, and, and makes accessible LGBTQ history and culture. So they're based out of Chicago. So they reached out to someone 
Uh, and that letter that they sent out landed on the desk of Kevin Boyer. So Kevin Boyer latched on to this idea. And they also sent a note out to the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Teachers Network, which is GLSEN, which is a very uh, popular organization today. And Kevin Jennings caught wind of it. And so he was... He was is like, that why so many gay kids... I mean, gay kids are named GLSEN? Yes, they're is all GLSEN. And, <laughs> and then there were a couple of other folks. Uh, Jesse Ad Greenman, who was a student at UCAL Berkeley, and Tori Wilson, who was a sh another teacher in Chicago. And they all came together once they received the, the, the proposal from, uh, from Rod Rodney Wilson. And they said, okay, we can get behind this. So they formed a committee. And they therefore went forth and chartered this this idea of LGBT History Month in October. In October, yeah. So, okay, so well, no, no, they didn't. They didn't come up with the idea in October. They started early 1994. Any month, they were like, any month will do. No, they landed in October because it was welcome to the podcast, Kendall, because it was natural Thank coming. You. Right, that's what I'm saying. October Since 1994, October has been. Gay Pride Month, right? Yeah, but but Gay month. History Month. Mm, gay History right. Month. It's not Pride. Different. Pride is Pride June. is Stonewall June. Yeah, history is in October. Uh, again, this is listen an opportunity. To opportunity. Yeah, listen. To <laughs> well, the episode hasn't come out yet. <laughs> yeah, but listen. It was to episode four. Episode four. <laughs> we're, we're, four. we're recording it right now. Just listen. <laughs> well, I have to listen to it first. <laughs> this again okay, is ahead. an opportunity to celebrate history of LGBT people, not just in terms of like Stonewall, but in terms of the things they've done and with regards to the arts, sciences, sports, and what. Such as the Iraq. Such as the Iraq. <laughs> yeah. So this committee comes together. They put forth a proposal, which gets a lot of support from a lot of LGBT organ prominent LGBT organizations in the early 90s. GLAD signs on. The Human Rights Campaign signs on. The Gay and Lesbian of American signs on. Uh, National Gay and Lesbians Task Force signs on, which is now known as the National Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, Transgender, and Queer Task Force signs on. A GLSEN, again, which is this educational group of teachers, uh, signs on. So they all received, they all endorsed this this movement, and then you start to get this traction of like we're actually going to have an LGBT History Month again, which is different than Pride because yeah. Pride is. We get to wear, like, I think, Tony, you said, if I get to wear glitter makeup and a glitter beard and pride, then let me do okay. that. Why not? Yeah. Well, why is he wearing in Well, August? that was me. But yeah. No, but my point but is. But you do that in August. Hairy too. chest, beer belly, glitter bikini. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not, that's not October. October is LGBT oh. History Month. And so, so they, they sent out a proposal. It got picked up. Wait, it what got, is a glitter mm -hmm. bikini? For you specifically, on his it's like a rainbow bikini that's like sequin glitter. You know. Okay. You saw me in it on Pride. <laughs> yeah, but, you, but then again, but you like, as wearing, soon as you saw me, you disowned me, and you're like, but you wearing, I don't know him." <laughs> you weren't wearing bottoms, so I didn't know if it was a bikini or you was just like a glitter <laughs> top. <laughs> because this was a monumental movement, <laughs> and you had the backing of a prominent organization at the time, Gerber Hart Library. Again, an archive there in Chicago. It started to get some traction. Connecticut, Massachusetts, Oregon. They made it all. They made all official proclamations that October was going to be LGBT History Month. And so, how it played, how it played out is, this group, the small committee, started to put five. They they took five dollar contributions, and, they, and the committee mailed out packets of material with History Month curriculum suggestions for secondary schools, colleges, and universities, and community groups. The packets, they mailed them out of the Gerber Hart Library, uh, and then the other events pursued, or not pursued, what's the right word? Other events uh, happened after that. Something happened. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, so Glisten sponsored a history conference event in Boston, and that actually attracted 200 educators. Uh, and then you had other other scenarios where the University of Missouri at St. Louis, they sponsored an event, uh, an LGBT History Month event, and they had uh, LGBT History Film Festival. Uh, you started to see other news stories appear in, in this, and you saw a lot of schools and universities just kind of run with this idea of LGBT History Month. And October became cemented in the community's mind as the LGBT History Month. This was all 1994. So this guy went from January, Wilson, this teacher, this high school teacher, 
went from idea in January to making and all stuff that happen in, in October. In 1994. Okay, but here's my thing. I didn't know it was Gay History Month in October until right now. Well, so did he die in 1995? He's not dead. <laughs> no, actually, so what happened in October 1995? It started to receive some mainstream coverage. Newsweek magazine picked picked this up and had a feature article and then and 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 in 1995, Wilson and the Gay and Lesbian Caucus of the National Education Association they they pushed that group to make this a recognized event, much like they had African. African American History Month and Women's History Month, so that that General Assembly, like acquiesce, not acquiesce isn't the right word, but they agreed. They said, "Hey, let's let's celebrate LGBT History Month." Of course, 1995. What do you think happened when Crickets. you had the National Education Association embracing Ellen? Well, no, I'm just thinking. Oh. Like, do you think it was a <laughs> wide embrace? Do you think there was a wide embrace of like, oh yeah, let's well, celebrate there LGBT isn't one. History Month? I don't. I'm still unaware that there's a gay history month. <laughs> no, that's I, not a joke. I agree. I agree, like, I agree. I agree. I don't think it's hit all. And, you yeah. Know, the more of us need to. Twenty years later, <laughs> what do we need to do? <laughs> well, no, I agree. <laughs> I feel like most people just associate June with. Pride oh, Month. Yeah, month for real. I thought that was out. June. I can't. Well, June is Pride Month. June is Pride Month. You celebrate like you celebrate Stonewall, like the liberation, right? We're yeah. fighting for our rights. And, our history. And, and, and no, well, that's different because October you spend the time celebrating people in again in the arts and sports and just in politics. You you dedicate that because June is a party. Are we gonna say June's not a party? Like how often are you it's thinking a party. about? Oh, Greg Lugane is in June. You're not. <laughs> October's the time to reflect, much like you do in February about African Americans yeah. or in March. Kendall's not was, buying it. You're not selling I'm it. I'm like <laughs> preaching to the choir. Like I'm like, might as well be talking to a wall. As I Can I only fantasize Kendall. about Greg Lugane in October? Kendall's not Greg buying Luganus it. Greg Lugane is like, more of a July oh my fantasy gosh. for me. So, so in 1995, though, they did get the uh, the endorsement of the National Education Association. Well, they thank met, God. They, <laughs> that's probably why it never got This is a big deal. Caught on. Besides... Uh, your <laughs> lack of knowledge about this that schools started to introduce this as a as a month that they were going to talk to students about this much like they like they did African American History Month and Women's History Month of course again in, in 1995 do you think people were excited about p- teachers talking no. to their students about they're LGBT probably pulling their kids out of school yeah <laughs> and, and there were active Burning advertisements against saying no so um, Phyllis Shalafi, Shalafi, Shafley, Shafley. Shafley. yeah, of the Eagle Forum and Beverly LaHaye of the Concerned Women of America. <laughs> <laughs> the, those wonderful gems of a women uh, of women. As I read about them, I'm like, oh, they're the end Coulters of the 70s, 80s. Uh, yeah, probably not cute. Uh, no, I mean, they, well, they were the the nice white blonde women, and so people probably loved them in their time. But that that. I'm going to equate them, no offense, as I, as we have a, <laughs> but you're not, you're not an Ann Coulter type, but I, mm. I, I would equate these people. <laughs> I'm not saying that <laughs> you are, uh, they, they were, they were very conservative women. They were anti LGBT. They were anti women's rights. Uh, they were not having any of it. And so they sent a note out to the NEA and to parents scaring them saying, it LGBT History Month. Maybe celebrate it at your school before the month is over. Please call now. This must be stopped. They were mm. uh, like they had Stop a. The oh yeah. They had an always, ad, yeah. Like, you're, you're the teachers are trying to, you know, put their gay agenda on you. Up so, their butts. Yeah. Well, no. That's a that's the Catholic Church, not the the education <laughs> system. So yeah. under pressure, that's the private education. The NEA delegate like delegates in 1996. They they had to actually walk that back their endorsement of uh lgbt history month they had to walk it back which coincidentally lgbt history month was not always called lgbt history month it was called first called, it was just called lg month like lesbian and gay month because bi month was added like the well, b was added was later you know how time. kendall feels about these acronyms simpler times yeah <laughs> and the t was added later so of course today what well, t comes always after the oh, shitty. oh okay. what? today though like 
this this month has, despite Kendall's lack of knowledge on it, is celebrated in full force across the globe. You've got. Well, you just said celebrated. Celebrated or celebrated, yeah. <laughs> it's, and I'm the one with lack of education. It's celebrated <laughs> across the globe. Louisiana. Uh, it's celebrated in Canada in October. Part. The Although, foot of the boot. Uh, it's celebrated in multiple countries. The UK, though, uh, actually celebrates LGBT History Month in a different uh, month. They celebrate it in February because in that month. Because uh, they have no black people? Not this LGBT History Month. No. Right, but I mean. That's for the, why, why do they no. do in February? <laughs> what do they do in February? Because back in 2003, they repealed the so October uh, section, is... section 28 of their Local Government Act of 1988, which basically said you couldn't uh, you couldn't have gay people couldn't have sex. Oh, so sodomy. so they were like so they they used what y'all doing over there? UK? <laughs> need to get you okay? No need to You okay? You okay? UK? Many cities Boom, nowadays. UK. Throughout the U.S., officially commemorate LGBT History Month, uh, and you can see it despite Kendall's lack of awareness across universities and appreciation. Still, <laughs> in libraries, museums, uh, and there's Y'all lots call of in film, if you, if radio, you. documentaries, and books that kind of recognize the month. Uh, as much as it is more endorsed than it was previously, only 17% of students are taught LGBT history school or LGBT history in school, which is kind of sad. That's crazy. 17. And I say that, and I am. Uh, so you've never heard of LGBT I, history month? But you're, I, you're part of the I'm, 0%. I, I, no. I'm a product of the, our, our education <laughs> you're, system. I you're talking that, about it's crazy. I, I also that, graduated I, after yeah. all this. I say that as an educator, and I don't tell people that I'm in a same sex relationship. Like, so. I know you're, part you're of so the scared. It's not that I'm scared. I just don't want it to uh, uh, stop. Nope. Influence the discussion. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't want people to be like, oh, well, he's just biased because he's gay. So I well, try to choice. balance. I try to balance. Like, I don't. Yeah. I do feel like, I mean, would you. It's your if choice, you were ta- though, honestly. Well, like, if you were like, I don't know. in an open discussion with your uh, students about like, everybody's talking about like their. You know, relationship. Would you feel like, oh, I can't mention that it's a I'm, guy? Well, it's not. It's not a matter of being scared. It's a matter of not trying to taint the discussion. I'm like, no, no, I'm no. trying to. But, but I'm saying what like, that means. Because I mean, so my friends and I had this discussion about like coming out in the oil industry, yeah. like, and so which I was out in the oil industry. I didn't. I didn't care. Like, no, uh, but but it's like, um, it's it's one way. thing to like. I feel if you're single. To be like, oh, what'd you do this weekend? Well, I went to like fucking, you know, TCP and like was, you know, tipping a stripper versus like, oh, you know, Kendall and I like did this or Kendall and I did that. It's a little bit different than. Mm, uh, so I guess my, I would, what I would say is because I feel very, I don't, I'm not trying to hide anything. Mm-hmm. My point is, I, I'm not trying, I'm trying to foster an environment yeah. as an educator that that people can think for themselves if they feel like I'm cause I, I do get a sense that a lot of the people that I'm talking to, they may come a, from a, a view that's different than mine. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. So I don't want them to think, Oh, I'm just trying to impart my view on them. This yeah. is liberal hippie teacher trying to do that. I'm trying I, I balance it because I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to educate on from both points of view. I'm like, well, that's about, you could, definitely be a trump supporter but here's another point of view like that's yeah. my that's i actually 100 percent oh. disagree with you that's fair in the sense that i think you should be open honest who you are and i think that's an education in and of itself yeah to say here's who i am yet if you completely disagree with me it's perfectly fine because yeah i uh, we're I mean, finding our own way and if well that's i guess where you i mean, work i don't care up, like that's I, fine. I, I, yeah. from a work environment standpoint i, I don't think care. it would educate them more but as a as an educator like more. i don't want people to feel I mean, like I guess biased for me it's about the timing so like if like if i was a uh, i'm biased rather like if i was in your shoes and i was like teaching this you know college class i don't know that day one i'd be like hey my t- my name's thomas i'm gay but like i feel if the discussion ever comes up of everybody's talking about like their boyfriend or girlfriend or this and that. And like you mentioned like Spencer versus being vague. That's where I think you should just mention Spencer versus being well, vague. It's not even that. It's just like, I have uh, students okay. that have a different, uh, 
view on like so what are you oh yeah yeah, yeah. oh i'm sure i'm sure i'm sure yeah 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 but i want to hear it versus be like you know what that's wrong like i'm just like talk to me a little because i don't understand their their experience like i want to know more so i don't know these are what like they're like 19 20 21 yeah Yeah. ages of 18 and 25 yeah yeah and so if they're like from like remote houston where like all they know or well these guys are mostly from inner city houston which is even more like to me interesting because a lot of them are minorities and so there are there's closeted people among them I'll tell you I, I, but so you I choose not to be you it's, it's not a matter of being out not out or in i'm just trying not to i i have no problem like the question of are you dating someone? Has it come up? So I, I have no problem saying that. The, it's a matter of because I, I'll, 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 I'm teaching a management course, right? So there are right. all sorts of things that come up that are relevant to management that are in today's like in, uh, news lines, right? So our headlines. So whatever the president does, if re, re, um, regarding immigration or taxes or any of that stuff relates to management so i can pull in those examples in the classroom yeah, discussion yeah. yeah and so when i mention those things i see some people who look like they're trump supporters and and my my long-winded way of saying like there's an lgbt element to that and i'm like i'm not trying to put that right yeah there. yeah because i mean that's one part of your identity in yourself it's and, like, and no. i don't want to take Let's people's stop. discussions. I well, my point is, I want no, to hear I mean, other just because stop. you're gay. Like you could have the, all these same views if you were not gay. I don't understand. I can't understand that. No, but I mean, so you, why you, are we not? But you can be a straight person who supports Elizabeth Warren. I, like it's not that I'm not telling people I'm gay. I'm just not talking about it. But why? No, why? No, what is your no. intention for not talking about it? Uh, I feel it's it's not relevant to the conversation. I don't understand that in any no, way. No, I'm not talking about that though. But I'm saying like other. You no, can be a I think this person. is very important. Oh, I know I really do. Yeah. No, you choose with your students, yep. which is perfectly fine. I'm just trying to understand the conversation. To never tell them that you're. It's not never. I just do any of them know in any context, shape, or form. I just didn't want to like. I didn't want to come out and be like. By the way, everybody. Why I'm does in a that have to be? See, this is what we've been told what, to do none of my professors in college ever said i'm married to a woman because so. it was a given because if you were gay you wouldn't ever talk about literally you would never talk about relationships period you would be what you're doing right now that sounds really mean and hateful but i'm just being honest this is something straight people never and i think this is important for a let's talk about gay stuff podcast this is something that straight people never have to think about Right is yeah. to think I cannot talk about the person I live with because it may make the conversation difficult for other people. Um. Okay. I right. Mean, I you get know what I mean? Saying. Like it's less you're difficult. You're remaining to be in the. Cl- you're choosing to be in the closet. It, it's no. I I don't feel like I'm in the closet. I feel like I'm. I would be unfairly influencing a conversation that I'm like. Let's walk you through that. I'm not trying no. to tell because I I feel especially today in 2019. I feel like I'm a, influence the conversation. I'm a, I'm a gay uh, like I'm your gay professor. People are gonna be like, oh well, he's just that. Like I'm not trying to be a stereotype or anything. I want to I want you to s- express your opinion. I understand what you're I, saying, and I want to have a dialogue with you. I understand and, and what you're saying is I don't want to spook you because I'm a you might think I'm a freaky gay guy. No, it's not even that. I don't want you to think I'm a uber liberal person that's trying to trump you. That like, like because well, you're gay, be that's that? that's what's defining the rest of your. So you're saying gay equals uber liberal. I'm saying there's a perception out there. My point is, I don't care. I I want to have a conversation with you. You don't have to know who I date, whether I was straight or gay. Like I just want to have a conversation with students and engage and like. Oh, and I'm gonna poke. Yes, them, which but, is a different like, conversation than I'm expressly like I'm not telling people that I have a boyfriend because I don't want them to think something about me is a different discussion than I don't want them to think I'm liberal. Right. That's different. So well, saying I'm not it, talking it, about my boyfriend because uh, they might think 
X, Y, Z. But the thing about is, are me. you it's like denying it always, or just not leading off with it? I'm like, not, it's not a denial. It's like a like, yeah. It's an absence of. Cause, well, because my thing is this like is the discussion we've had. Before. No, but the thing is, yeah, if if you like were like, okay, I'm not gonna walk out. I'm like, hey, everyone, my name's Thomas. I'm your professor for the semester. I'm gay. Who does that? Yeah, Who ever does that? No, exactly. Point? You know what? That is a straight talking point. But the thing is, if it comes up and you deny it, then no gay that's person I get your does point. My no point. Gay I want to make that clear. I'm not denying. Does. See, and that's the thing. That's where I think you're missing this. I feel like, like I'm not you're thinking it. Thomas walks out there and is like, oh, but I'm not gay. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. deny it. I'm just like I'm trying it's to have a conversation. I'm, I'm like, oh, so you think this way about transgender people? I'm like, but Kendall, have you, you just have you thought about this? And they're like, oh no. But don't hate me. Don't hate us. About them. My point is, I I don't feel like I'm hiding it. I'm just trying not to like make that the over because if I feel if so I, they know, but they just know that it's not an over. Oh, I, I you've told I them, but it's not I haven't like, told them. I know, and it's not a matter of. I think okay, because this is about the whole point of the um, podcast is about. Exactly. Is that I? Exactly. I think you're saying that you don't want your, or you've you've kept from your students that you're gay because you don't want them to feel a certain way about you is that nope it's less it's less than i i'm trying to provoke a a thoughtful discussion i don't want them to think i'm some uber liberal who's like because so you're saying gay equals uber uber liberal i think in texas yes in houston texas Mm, yeah i think part of you that's what it is there's nothing to care i I think okay I, then I'm on a podcast that's, ta- that's called Let's Talk About, about Gay, gay Stuff. stuff. Then I'm not, you're letting I'm not them scared. define who you I, are. No. Okay, I, whatever. I, I mean, we can agree to disagree. It's not a thing. Like, it just... I don't, I'm trying to... I can't like, have a discussion here. No one will fucking have a discussion. <laughs> I, honey, tell me about it. We are having this discussion. Anyways, it is LGBT History Month, and we are excited about it. And... To sum it up, though, LGBT History Month, LGBT His- History Month sends Back an important track, sends an important message to our nation's teachers, school boards, community leaders, and youth about vital importance of recognizing and exploring the role of gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people in American history. And that was said by a w- more thoughtful professor than I, uh, George Chauncey, who's a Yale University professor in the in their history department, and so. We thank him for articulating it better than I can, Kendall. Mm, <laughs> ish. I think he did a great job. It is an important month, and so it's not it Pride is, yeah. Month. It, it's not pr- Meteor. It's not Pride Month. It is. You didn't even know this month existed. Hello, we're talking about March because we march for we, our rights. The reason I love this podcast <laughs> is I educate myself every week. I didn't know a lot of this you stuff. You didn't know this month, October, it was LGBT. No, I'm History just month? talking about like everything. Like, I mean, I didn't know who Oliver Sipple was. I didn't like, I mean. Can I go back just and make it about me? Please. You're engaged. Okay, so today. No, I think this is an issue that many gays can relate to. And if we're not, if we're going to have a let's talk about gay stuff discussion, I want to be let's completely honest. Okay. Let's do it. So I went back home today from my boyfriend. Slash fiance. Mm, your fiance. Uh, <laughs> home to my flooded place, and I live on the second story. So I get there. Cause I live on the second Stop. floor. Stop. So upstairs with you. I get there, and there's a guy cleaning out the the place below me, and he starts talking to me. He said, "Oh, you lived before. Well, uh, did you sleep here tonight?" And I literally said, as a confident gay man who doesn't give a fuck, really, truly, so yeah, I no, think I in my, my own life, cause it's... I stayed at my friend's place. I said that in oh. fucking 2019, okay? So the discussion I'm having with you about um, oh, what true. we tell our that's students... True. No, stop. This is, this is honest. The discussion we have about yeah, as gay people true. matters. So if we're going to make excuses about, well, I didn't want to make my students uncomfortable, which is really what you're saying. I didn't want to make this stranger uncomfortable. Yeah. Am I ever going to see him again a no, day in exactly. my life? Yeah, Absolutely yeah. not. Yet, there was a survival mechanism in me, maybe as a, it's a 36-year-old man, that said it was best for me in that situation to be like, to no, say, I'm going to differ. No, I was staying with my friend. I'm okay? going to differ because Please Spencer, differ because Spencer it's and I walk all the time with holding hands throughout the streets of Houston. And you know why it's a story? You know why you tell that story about because it's it you tell me situations where 
people might cuss you out or a no. few homeless people. They do. I don't care. We hold hands all the time. It's still dangerous, Thomas. Fine. But my point is I'm more uh, on, on in the university realm. It's more about having a, a discussion where people don't feel I like I'm already see that. I cannot see coming that at, at them with a position. Like I want to, I, I show me a straight person that I, will Thomas, they're, stay they're in the closet as a straight person. Well, that's my point is I'm trying to teach. I like, Maybe I'm you trying to, them your viewpoint. so, Oh, okay. I'm getting, you I'm are getting some feedback. I'm getting that. Yes. Me. This is a, you they are, they're in college. You to need to be, what if they've college. never met a gay person? Why don't you mm-hmm. just be unapologetically, my husband, blah, blah, blah. It's not... It's it's not a hiding. It's like, so that's what you think? So let's talk about that. But yes. I feel like I'm going to... Are you doing that? I, I, I do ask them. Those are, I ask critical questions. It's not hiding behind the the uh, me not being gay. I'm like, oh, so that's what you think about transgender people. Like, have you ever thought about their perspective from these, these, okay, these, these questions? Okay, I have a question. Yep. If you went to Texas A&M, yeah, very I, conservative... And I did go to Texas A&M. Not say it. you had a few, maybe one... Um, class where you had a professor that was just didn't make it a point because it kind of feeds the way I'm hearing it from you. It kind of feeds into what we have to battle so many times of why are you throwing your gayness in my face? What the hell are you talking about? Well, like I just denied I I had a boyfriend and called him a friend unless to protect you. Like, you know what I mean? It kind of feeds into that. So let's go back to the nineties when you were at Texas A&M and And how do you think that would have impacted your as like, you put it like that, I understand it. I I understand your point. I still maintain like I I want to. I but at the same time I forget gay, Hispanic. Like I don't. You can't deny that I'm Hispanic. You look at me. I'm obviously brown. We all thought you were Indian. But I don't want to base all my conversation on um, the no, ability to have act equal like immigration law. Because here's the thing: if I talk about immigration, people are gonna be like. They're going to look at me and you're like, oh, you're browns, you're biased. And my point yeah. is, like, I can have. Guess let's, what? Let's you're ha- gay Mexican let's American. Have, let's have an intellectual debate about. Forget that I'm brown. Like, I want to have. Because to me, I want to have a factual based argument. This is why I attack conservatives and liberals on Twitter. I'm like, you need to be smarter than just a sloppy argument. Just because. But no I, one's Just because I'm gay or just because I'm brown. Like, you need to be. You need to. Bring some half. No one's to- asking you to be Harvey Milk, uh, but I'm, no. Here's I, I, what I'm, I'm saying. Not, I'm not saying you're doing anything I'm wrong. I'm saying principled. I I'm I understand. In that regard. What I'm saying is, for you to feel like you have to be in the closet because you don't want to taint the conversation. No, 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 no. no. You're getting that. You're, I don't think he's being closeted. Not, I think I don't, just yeah. So, you, I don't okay. feel like I'm being in the closet. I just have not like put that out there. I, if, Over, I, and you're I, only like what a month into the yeah, semester. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm not. I'm not being like, oh, I date women because that would be different. I'm not trying to pretend anything. I'm. My point is. My point is. <laughs> my point. My point is. I am just trying to say, hey, I want to put that out of the conversation. I want to have a neutralizing conversation. So this is not me denying my relationship with Spencer at all. This is just saying. Let's have a conversation. So I think we've had a Okay, well, let me give my experience oh, from someone that I Exactly. Thank you. Dated. I was waiting for it. Please. That said. We've all been waiting for this. That said. Congratulations I on your I love you so much, but my job does not, would not understand the situation we're in. My job would not be okay with us. My job says you cannot come to the Christmas party slash whatever. So my question is, did and you then, go to the Christmas your, party without him, I'm or not, you said I no? I never said that to him, by the way. You were invited oh, no, no, to no, every no, this Christmas is a person party. I dated. Okay, I'm like, you, you, <laughs> went to every Christmas, you were invited to every Christmas party. So are you going to say no? Okay, we're on mics. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. That's Thank what I'm you. Saying. Like, Kendall, it's all about you right now. In 2012 when we it's all about you right now. Thank you. You were invited. You hated going to public events with me. That's not a lie. I would invite you everywhere. I wouldn't want to go to an excellent Christmas party either. Birthday parties, oh. and you were like, I don't like to go to those places. Cause those Why can't people, you just go hang hate, out with Martha? I don't like straight people, so don't yeah. blame that on me. Why can't you just go hang out with Martha? Exactly. 
And when the finally, when he decided to attend a, an event, what did he do? He took off his shoes along with Martha, and they danced around the dance floor with broken glass all over the place at the National Air and Space Museum. Oh, Whatever. I funny. always take my shoes off at, at like na- weddings and stuff. I can't stand at the wearing National shoes. Air and Space Museum. I don't care where it is. Fine. With it. your company. Mm. Okay, I don't that's care. my point. Yeah. <laughs> this is all getting. First of all, this is all right. Deleted out. Yeah. So, thank you for listening to our podcast and kicking with us this week. Sorry, uh, we kept it so short this week. A reminder that Monday, October it's the seventh, is the last yeah. day to register to vote in Texas for the November fifth November election. That's crazy. This but is important. That's what? a whole other topic. What's that? Go ahead. That thirty days. Anyways. Tony's going to – come on, Tony, give it to us. I'm all about voter – like, that's my number one thing with the new – like, I just want, like, voting for everybody. I don't want all this shit where it's like, oh, 30 days registration. You don't think there's some administrative aspect that you need to, like, process people? Like, uh, do. I mean, maybe, but then also, like – I'm, so, I'm an well, HR person, administrator yeah, by heart. I'm like, what? what's – like, I get I mean, it. maybe. Okay, so do you need 30? But then – I, I feel part of it, too, is, oh, like, you can early vote anywhere, but election day you have to vote here. Yeah, like, so And that happened to three of my coworkers last election where they're like, I get it. they went to, like, an early voting place. They're like, oh, well, this is election day. You can't vote here. Like, all my oh, friends vote. it's all vo- bullshit. Yeah. But you know what? If it benefited the Democrats, they would do the same motherfucking bullshit. Mm, true. So it just happens to benefit the Anyway, <laughs> Anyways. No, we're, we're on, though, yeah. So thank you for listening to our <laughs> podcast and kicking with us this week. A special thank you to Spencer. Woo! Woo-hoo. That, Who uh, played Marjorie Lee Winnick to this yeah, Marjorie, your, the cutest Marjorie I've ever seen. Your role as Marjorie was amazing. Miss Georgia World, 1986. Emmy Award Woof. winning, Grammy Award winning, Spencer Alexander from our spoopy podcast. Don't forget to listen to our spoopy podcast. They have an episode coming out next Sunday with all the spoopiest things you could want to listen to. And then it's October, so you should be listening to spoopy things. And don't forget to li- to subscribe so you can hear our future episodes by visiting our website at Let's Talk About Gay Stuff. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Let's Talk About Gay Stuff and on Twitter at Talk Gay Stuff. Leave us a review. Tell us what you think. We want to know. And if you're scared, you can send us a, a, an email at let's talk about gay stuff at gmail.com. It is October. It is LGBT History Month. Let us know what you let us know your feedback. And mm. it's Kendall's birthday month, so we're gonna celebrate Ooh, when's your all birthday? month long. Twenty fifth. Oh. When's F- your birthday? F I F. Wait, is it only one so, birthday this month? Yeah, so we're here. This is the first. We're well, here. I, that's why we're here. We're queer. Get used to it. <laughs>